All right, welcome everybody. So this is the start of our third and final playoff game before the championship. Playoff game number three of C4 AI Survivors Season 6. In this game, I will zoom out and show the map. So I mentioned this on stream before I started the YouTube recording portion. It's a small map, not that big. Three leaders in the north, three leaders in the south. Three leaders in the north, all low piece weight. Three leaders in the south, all high piece weight. So we've got our more aggressive leaders in the north and our more peaceful leaders in the south, or at least in theory, that's what we have. So the big favorite for this game is Wina Kopek. Uh, I will be trying not to root for him too shamelessly because he's on my fantasy team for AI Survivor. Dr. Warclam, thanks for providing the peace weights here. Um, I will try not to root too shamelessly for him, but he is the favorite. He was picked by about 70% of our picking contest entries. As far as the runner-up, it was split pretty evenly between Mal and, uh, and uh, Augustus Caesar. I think it was like 37% for each. So between the two of them, uh, I think most of the people have picked one of them for a second place. And then first to die, the favorite was Alex, but not by a huge margin. We didn't have a big favorite for first to die in this. All right, so let's go ahead and get started and see what this game has in store for us. One of the things we know going into the game is Wina Kopic is guaranteed to found a religion if he wants, which I'm sure he does. Uh, that's because no other leader in this game starts with meditation, or not meditation, nobody else starts with mysticism. So he will found the first religion. The question is just where does he want to set, send it? Uh, and the other thing is the other leaders, again, will watch where they send their settlers. It is where the archer is in the screenshot. So Alex moving east, Mal moving northwest, Wina Kopek moving south, Augustus moving northwest, Churchill moving northeast. That's good for Augustus, that Churchill's not heading in his direction. Sitting Bull heading west. All right, so let's see. Alex has founded a very close city. Interesting. Um, unfortunately for him, this is not a great spot. It doesn't really have anything. I guess it's fine once he gets uh, animal husbandry, but it might take him a little while to get there. Um, and he's build, doing the build the settler at size one thing that the AI likes to do. Too bad he's not imperialistic. He could actually build the settler relatively fast if he was working the marble. So not terrible, um, but not great. Not terrible, not great. Uh, very low commerce potential. There's no rivers here and it's mostly all hills. Anyway, so uh, Wynakopek also is founded early, but this is definitely a better spot. So he's locking down the central floodplains region here. These two cities will have a river uh, river connection for the trade route, um, even without uh, sailing tech or fishing tech or whatever it is. He just needs the borders to expand at the capital and then the borders to expand at the second city, which they will because it's going to be a holy city. Uh, let's see, he has multiple floodplains for food. He's going to have a uh, uh, pig's also going to have ivory for another happiness point. That's a very strong second city. About the only weakness of these two cities is very is not especially high production. Uh, I guess there's some hill tiles for production, but uh, we'll need to go mining to get any kind of realistic production out of these cities. All right, Mao's also placed his second city. No food in the first ring, so he's going to need to expand borders. If Mao is slow to research mysticism, this is a bad city. But uh, once he pops the borders, it becomes a good city. It's just slow starting until it gets the ivory and the pigs in range. All right, so we still got the southern leaders yet to settle. Let's see where they're going. So Sitting Bull has put down Poverty Point. And, uh, well, uh, I wouldn't say this is a great second city. I was thinking that when I picked him, I was thinking he might go into, like, the floodplains region or, or something like that. He's narrowly missed a lot of resources. I guess if his borders expand, he has furs and the deer tile, but I wouldn't say that's very good. I, you, you can't say it's the real poverty point because there are green tiles here. There is a food bonus, even if tundra deer is a pretty weak food bonus, but could have done better for sure. Uh, going for that gold resource would have been better too. Oh, well. And Churchill has not settled yet. And August, why is Augustus not settled? What is he doing? Is he just wandering around with this settler? What is he doing with this? Uh, he did connect a work boat immediately though. And uh, note the farmed zero food five production uh, marble tile, which is a nice production tile. But like that allows him to do this, <laughs> build that workboat super fast. Again, it's a nice start for Augustus. The question is not his capital. It's what does he do after his capital was more my concern for him. Uh, all right. So Churchill uh, has found it a pretty good spot. Locks down early copper. 
makes him less likely to be first to die with protective and early copper. He's got floodplains for food. If he pops the borders, he's got a dry corn. Not bad. Like, not an amazing city, but not bad by any means. He also did not settle right on... All of these leaders, none of them have settled right on top of each other. Like, Churchill went north. There was a little more space over here. Augustus didn't drop a city, like, on this tile. Or, like, in theory, you could drop a city there. Uh, and Augustus is still figuring out where the heck he's going to settle. So, yeah, why is it taking him this long to settle? Okay, he settles on the stone. Huh. Oh, and we have our first religion. He picks Taoism for some reason. Stone. Uh, maybe, maybe he wants stone? I mean, he needs masonry for that. Uh, this is, again, after popping borders, it's a nice city, but uh, it's going to be pretty weak until it does pop borders. Maybe he'll go for... No, I was going to say maybe he goes for an early religion, but he's on bronze working, uh, which is actually a pretty good tech for him to chop down these trees uh, at his capital. So, uh, yeah, I mean, with Imperialistic, he actually does get <laughs> a little bit of extra production on that settler. So, not bad. Um, but again, my question was not, like, this is good land. Where does he go after this? I guess he goes into the jungle? or I, don't know, I mean, like, there's some land down here. So, okay, now we can advance the turns a little bit faster because there won't be much going on for the next few turns. Nice city once the borders pop, indeed. All right, so Winokopek is growing. Does that give him... All right, so look, he gets the... This is... We already know he's a good leader when it comes to economy, and this is just like the benefit of starting in the floodplains region. So one commerce from this tile, one commerce from this tile, one commerce from this tile, and he gets a trade route for two more two more commerce. So again, I don't want to like nitpick this too much, but like he's he is already on, what, 18 commerce per turn? Like compared to Alex, who's on... Yeah, what? What is this, 14? I mean, he's already like 30% ahead this early in the game, it makes a big difference. Uh, going for early animal husbandry, which makes sense because he's got the pigs, double pigs, and that allows him to see the horses. So um, if he drops his third city like here, that would be pretty good, but we'll see. All right, so Augustus over here has built the double workboats. Now he's, yeah, there he goes. So like I said, he's got a good start. This is a really nice capital for him. Now, who's going to get the first settler out? Who's actually training? So, so there's six turns settler there, nine turns. It might be Sitting Bull. Sitting Bull and Mao, I think, are going to get the first settlers out. Uh, Sitting Bull just finished Animal Husbandry. Oh, at Wynakopek. We'll get a decent settler out. Nine turns settler. He is. So this is one of the advantages. One of the reasons why agriculture tends to be the best starting tech allows Wynakopek, even though he started with a religion, it still lets him farm these floodplains, and he still gets, you know, reasonably decent yields just out of farming all these floodplains tiles. No one else has signaled that they're going for an early religion just yet. Over here, Alex picked up agriculture to farm one of his dry corns. I'm assuming he'll go farm the other one. Yeah, a couple different AIs building settlers in their capitals, which is a little unusual for them to do that. <laughs> Look at all these floodplains farms. I mean, it's as good as a rice tile, right? If you're farming the floodplains. Good as a rice tile. Anyway, so we should see Mal and Sitting Bull get their settlers out first. And that's an early bronze working from Augustus. So he said, saw that he was going for that early on. Oh, he does want the masonry. Look at this. He really wants that so he can connect that stone. Uh, he needs sailing to connect these two cities, though, right? Or no, um, I think if he has fishing, it connects in his territory. If it's in your borders, I believe it connects uh, with just fishing. So masonry will give him super duper early stone. If he turns that into an early Stonehenge, then uh, that could be pretty nice. Although he'll probably turn it into an early Great Wall because he's going masonry. All right, Sitting Bull, Settler done. Mal, Settler done. Where, where are they going to send these? Let's see. Uh, is he setting this east? No, he's not. Oh, oh my god, is he going to settle here? Mal, you are a very popular pick in this contest. Oh, that was not, that was not where to go. <laughs> oh boy, that claims no territory at all. I mean, again, there is a sheep tile there, so it's not horrible, but it's like out of all the places you could send this settler to take a spot that claims literally zero territory is not, not what you want. Oh boy. Well, let's see where Sitting Bull's taking his settler. Uh, He's not doing any better his settlers down here 
Uh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, buddy. You lock down that spot. <laughs> Just like, why? There, there are no resources here. There's literally no resources here at all. This is the real poverty point. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I mean, like, there's a gold resource and a floodplains tile right here. He has to have seen these tiles. The AI does have to scout the map, but he has assuredly seen these tiles. Anyway, so Augustus uh, just finished his settler. Yeah, Augustus has a settler out. And Wenakopek, I believe, has a settler out. Oh. Well, Mal, see, this is what happens when you don't settle valuable terrain is a old HC is just going to come over here and he's going to grab it for you. I wonder if he spotted the horses yet. Nope, didn't go for the horses, but he gets floodplains plus marble plus wheat, um, which is pretty good. And he's going to get the early monument, so the borders will expand quickly. Does miss the iron, though, so that that could be significant. What is uh, Wynacopek's metal situation? Uh, he has copper up here, which he will most likely get this. So uh, whenever he settles up there. And he's going for wheel pottery, probably. Yep, wheel pottery. And then the cottaging Then the cottaging begins. He does need to get hunting tech, though. He's farming this tile here. But uh, I would say this is a good start for Wynacopak. Okay, how about Augustus? We know he's got a settler out. And it... I am not sure where he is. He sent, he might be sending this way up to the north. Because I think he wants these resources here. I mean, this is a long way. Okay, well, he just knocked out his five-turn Great Wall or whatever. <laughs> uh, has very good odds to get Stonehenge if he researches um, mysticism. Oh, boy. What is this? <laughs> what is this city? Uh, it can't grow because it's too unhealthy. And he won't be able to do anything with it until he gets iron working. Oh boy, this is literally just a drain on the economy. Like, this city contributes nothing and just adds maintenance costs. Yikes. This is a bad, bad spot for a third city. Um, yeah. Like I said, that contributes absolutely nothing. He is going to have stone and marble at a super early date. Because, like, he's already building the quarry over here. But, uh, woof. Not, not the best location to send that. All right, anyway, so uh, we have a settler done for Alex and Churchill sort of, uh, Churchill's just finishing his settler. So let's see where these go. Or actually, no, because let's see what people are doing at their capitals. Uh, Wynakopek has connected his pigs. He's farmed all these tiles. Pretty good. He needs to get, my, after minor pottery, he really needs to get mining and hunting, but uh, they will be cheap for him. Alex has connected his two uh, corns and that's about it. Otherwise, he's just built some roads. Mal has uh, farmed the wheat, and that's basically it. So, okay, not great. Sitting Bull uh, actually looks pretty good here. He needs to get roads so he can actually connect these resources. He can't build chariots until he tosses a road down. But, um, I mean, like, this capital is, what, 19 food hammers per turn? Uh, no, 15. Base production, 11. So 15 food hammers. I mean, that's not bad. I like it. I think that looks pretty good. And London has, wait, has actually, is that a quarry? Yeah, actually. Early masonry from uh, Churchill as well. He's quarried this one and I, he's quarried both of them. Okay. Doesn't have agriculture to farm his floodplains, but he's quarried both of his marbles. Okay. So that's a thing. And then Augustus, um, he's connected his seafood and then he's tossed down a, putting down a quarry on that tile. Okay, the AI on Deity gets a lot of bonuses. It is not an even playing field. Now, where is this settler going for Alex? I know he has one. It's still in Sparta right now. So is he going to try to push towards Wynacopak? Is he going to try to head south? Looks like it's heading south. Churchill also just finished his. So we'll keep an eye on that. And uh, like some of the other leaders are... Oh, early Stonehenge from HC, which would be very good for him. Um, first Barb City popping up. So we've got another settler due soon from Wynacopek and Sitting Bull. But let's see where the Alex settler goes first. Where is this one? Right in the middle of his territory. All right, here it is. If I had to guess, probably this 
region so down here somewhere, would be my guess. That's where he's sending it. Yeah, a lot of quarries in this game. Very early quarries. By the way, no one uh, no one going for that other early religion. Because, like, Wina Kopek picked up... He picked up meditation, but polytheism has not been claimed yet. So someone's going to get that relatively soon. But it's just sitting out there for someone to take. A lot of these leaders are don't go for early mysticism, though. Yeah, so Alex is settler walking around there. Oh, hello. What's this? Okay. <laughs> that may lead to some conflict down the road. I know these are both fairly peaceful leaders, both with high peace weights. But that, that feels like it might be squeezing Augustus just a little bit as far as where this city is planted. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, okay. I mean, it's and it's on a hill too. So that's a bold, bold location to be sure. Anyway, uh, Rome, Augustus will have iron once he researches it. He's already locked down a source. So, well, we'll see if he gets a visit from Praetorians down the road or not. All right, Alex picks this spot. He actually went literally on the tile I pinged. Um, but uh, I'm not sure. And this is, again, a pretty weak spot. So poor Alex, he, does he have animal husbandry? No, he's researching it. He needs animal husbandry desperately at Sparta. And this city, Corinth, just doesn't really have any food. So, I mean, the, the difference in quality between his cities and like Wynakopek cities is pretty monstrous. Um, <laughs> HC has already got a, oh, did he cancel his monument build here to build a terrace? That's actually smart. He was building a monument there earlier. Um, but like, this is looking like a pretty good start for Wynakopek. Wait, didn't he have a, didn't he have a settler in production here? Did he cancel it because of the archer? The barb archer running around? I don't know. I thought he was building a settler in his capital. Uh, he did build a settler. It's down here. He's pushing further south. That's, I mean, if he settles here and locks down the horses, um, I mean, that's pretty good. <laughs> anyway, uh, so what was it? Sitting Bull also had a settler that he was working on over here. And which I believe he walked back to... Oh, no, never mind. Here it is. I thought he walked the settler back into his capital, but he actually moved it over there. Uh, all right, so Wynakopek still wandering around. Down. All right, no, never mind. I would have thought that you would, you know, found here, but it looks like he wants the resource cluster because that's what the AI does. So, yeah, much, much weaker location for a city because there's no food. Um, but if he expands borders, then he'll get some food there uh, from the floodplains. Certainly is locking down a pretty good share of the map thus far. Anyway, so there is still a... Uh, uh, Mal does have a settler in production. Alex is another one in production. Sitting Bull founded on the tile we expected him to. I like Sitting Bull's opening aside from the real poverty point down there. And he actually has double settlers in production. Uh, once he connects the gold, that'll help his economy a good bit. And he's on pottery, so he'll be able to build cottages. Augustus, after his early good start, I don't... Kume has just really screwed him over so, so badly. And now he's building a settler 90 turns. Um, <laughs> I really hope for his sake that he's not going to fail to expand because he has that city on a, a settler. We know that the AI does this sometimes. They're like, oh, I'm building a settler. I don't need to build another settler. I mean, if he gets stuck on three cities because of that, yikes. Needs iron working very badly, I agree. Uh, on the plus side, he'll build the pyramids incredibly fast. <laughs> But uh, yeah, that's uh, that's not great. Anyway, so we have more settlers coming out. Mal's finishing one. I know Alex has got some in production. And Churchill, I think, was finishing one too. Uh, Churchill is he's got one down here. Probably gonna found on the tile he's standing right now. Yep. So Churchill has been doing his best to lock down the southern part of the map. He's got the un unfortunate middle spot, but seems to be making the most of it thus far. When a copic is apparently going nuts on barracks for some reason. <laughs> One of the worst things you can build early on in the game is a barracks. Is it just does nothing to uh, accelerate your growth curve at all. Anyway, Mal just finished a settler, but it's kind of just standing in his capital. Uh, there it goes. All right. Well, he appears to be heading for this spot over here, which is not the greatest. And uh, when a copic's going to finish Stonehenge, let me just refresh the map so we get that announcement. 
And, uh, yeah, I mean, it's been a pretty good opening so far for Wina Kopek. He's already, I mean, look at the score. He's 100 points ahead in score already. And now he won't waste time with um, monument builds in his cities because he just gets them for free. The one thing he needs to do is he needs to grab the copper. If he grabs the copper, he's pretty safe for the early game. All right. Well, let's see where Mal settles. I am going to guess that he'll settle here, just as a guess. Boy, Augustus is, oh man, Augustus, this 84 turn settler, oh boy. This is looking real rough for Augustus. Uh, where is he going? Oh, maybe he's going to settle on this tile. Yeah, I think that's where he's headed. All right. Well, let's let him finish out. By the way, this Barb City is looks pretty awesome. <laughs> Whoever gets this is going to be pretty happy with that spot. All right, so we went for the Plains Hill plant. Now, unfortunately, the city has no food whatsoever, whereas if it had been one town north, it would have actually had some food. But Augustus gets the pyramids. That's an obviously a nice wonder, but what he needs to do now is build the wonder known as a settler. Because <laughs> three cities isn't going to cut it. Anyway, uh, who else has something out here? So Sitting Bull has a settler right here, right next to this Quechua. And Alex also has a settler over here. So that city, oh man, Alex's cities just suck. <laughs> I don't know what else to say. Like Sparta is his second best city and it's not a very good one. His city's just like the quality of land over here is pretty bad. And he's certainly not helped himself by avoiding the only floodplains in the region. Um, Sitting Bull is still walking north. I guess he's going for this resource clump here. But I'd say that Sitting Bull and Wina Kopek have played the best openings thus far. Hey, I have them one too. Yay. Uh, and now double settler on HC as well. Hmm. Again, we're still very early, but uh, the Incan, the Incan train looks like it's starting to leave the station already. <laughs> Just uh, as long as this isn't a, a dog pile against Winokopek, he looks like he's in pretty good shape. But we're still early; we're fifty turns in. Let's not let's not uh, count our chickens before they're hatched, or whatever other um, metaphor you might or saying you might want to use. All right. So Augustus is now building Moai statues. Again, his capital is awesome. This is an amazing capital. But if he only has three cities and one of them is the garbage that's known as Kumai, then he's really in bad shape. And this city kind of sucks until it expands borders, which it hasn't done because he doesn't have mysticism. So uh, I don't know what he's doing, but it's whatever it is, it's not going very well. Uh, Churchill looking a little bit better. Sitting Bull is on one, two, three, four, five cities. His economy is probably not great, but he has the gold tile, so that'll help him out. I definitely like his position the most of the three southern leaders right now. Uh, anyway, let's get turn 50 screenshot, which is a little hard to get because the map is kind of weird. There we go. Yeah, does anyone other than Wynakopic have mysticism? I don't know if anyone does. So Augustus doesn't. Churchill doesn't. Sitting Bull doesn't. Alex doesn't. And Mal does not. So no, no one has mysticism. Literally no one else has mysticism. Uh, no, this city is actually not at any risk of flipping, you guys. Um, this city has to get up to 500 culture before it starts putting pressure. So all Churchill has to do is get any kind of culture in here before in uh, the next 30 turns. So I think I think he'll get be able to get some culture in here. I mean, as long as he researches mysticism at some point in time, should be okay. I guess it's possible. It's not impossible. Yes, yeah, Sitting Bull's unique building is literally a monument. It is it, That is true. So that's the reason why no other religion's been founded yet. No one has mysticism. So no one can get um, polytheism if no one has mysticism. Anyway. Oh, and uh, our, our graphs real quick. GNP is, yep, about what you'd expect. Production, line of Copex leading in that. Food, line of Copex leading in that. Power, everybody's relatively close. Churchill is the first one with metals connected, so he's tops in power. Culture is obscene. Um, and research rate, nine beakers, 11 beakers, 22, a little bit higher, seven, nine, 15. All right, Mal's economy is apparently pretty decent. I wonder why that is. It's probably just because all his cities are, oh, here it is. It's because he's got, uh, he, 
he kind of this um, this wine, and that's actually giving him a decent. And all the cities are connected by roads, which is not the case for a lot of these other leaders. So. Uh, oh, and his maintenance costs are minuscule because he hasn't claimed any territory. Three tiles away, three tiles away, and this is one, one, two, wait, one, two, three, four, five, five tiles away. Like compared to Sitting Bull, who's got cities much more further spaced. So that's good to keep maintenance costs down, but long term it's not great. Um, having so little land claimed. Okay, well you got this spot, and that the fact that this is on a hill could be significant because. This could be a major border city between, uh, like, if there's a fight between these two, the fact that this is on a hill and Machu Picchu is not on a hill could be significant. So that's a nice fortress city. Uh, the problem for Mal, though, is um, with this barb city popping up in this spot, it kind of blocks an opportunity to go further down. So he's almost out of room to expand right now. Like, there's room for another city here, maybe two more. But uh, after that, he could very easily get cut off here and just be stuck in that corner with uh, minimal cities. Also, Wynakopic really should not be letting himself get pillaged by this single barbarian warrior. Like, he has Quechua. As he's, all right, he attacked out and killed the barb warrior. <laughs> so he was able to keep his uh, pigs from getting pillaged. <laughs> and he just finished double settler. Yeah, Augustus, no mysticism, no roads, no agriculture on turn 50. Woof. Well, I mean, that is a path through the tech tree. <laughs> That's a path through the tree. Um, anyway, I don't suppose Churchill's plotting war against anyone. No. He's the only one with medals. That's the only reason why I figured it would be worthwhile checking. All right. Alex should have a settler out soon, too. Because Wynakopic, I know, has... Uh, no, he actually doesn't have any out on the map right now. Okay. Because, like, Wynakopic has just finished a settler in here and just adopted slavery. Let's see. All right, looks like he's going to go claim his copper with one of these. And he now has uh, horses, because we just saw the chariot run by. Wait, is he on another? No, I was going to say, is he on another double settler? But he's not. Uh, meanwhile, do we have settlers out for anyone else? I don't want to pay too much attention to Wynakopic, but uh, Augustus is, oh no. Oh no, now he's on another wonder. Great lighthouse. <laughs> I mean, the wonders are nice, but uh, he doesn't have any cities. <laughs> he's still stuck on three cities because he's still building this one. Oh, my goodness. Uh, if there's a plus thing. Oh, but he's up to two food hammers. Two food hammers because he connected the... Uh, it's on the coast, and so it gets to take advantage of the uh, clam. And if he can connect a fish tile, if this city ever pops its borders. So at least he's two food hammers per turn, not one food hammer per turn. But yeah, oof. Um, anyway, so Churchill planted another city in the jungle belt. Good city long term, weak city for the moment, for the time being. And the southern leaders are starting to push a little bit closer to the north. One, two, three, four, five. Wait, one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six cities for a sitting bull. He tossed down Snake Town over here, which is uh, on copper, and we'll have fish, so pretty good. I definitely say Sitting Bull is the strongest of the southern leaders right now. Augustus is just like trolling the game hardcore. <laughs> really, really weird uh, opening for him. So why not was like, fine, I'll just take the other religion myself then. Where did he get that? Over here. <laughs> so he just founded the, the just founded another city. He's like, all right, fine. If nobody wants the religions, I'll just take them for myself, I guess. Um, <laughs> so this probably going right here. Yeah, yeah, there it goes. So that gets um, a copper source for Wynakopek. And he has another settler down here, which is probably going to grab this resource cluster. Alex is just not off to a fast start. Um, Alex is still on bronze working. Yeah, he needs, he won't declare war until he has iron working because he won't have metals until he has, I guess maybe, maybe he'll settle this spot and get copper, but it's certainly not a fast opening from him and his economy is kind of terrible. All right, another city down here, locking down more of the jungle. Building Taoist missionaries and monasteries, huh? Interesting. I guess he's going to spread around his religion. Uh, what's Augustus doing? Well, he's still doing Augustus things. Sitting Bull is expanding, still looking pretty sharp. And Churchill is also 
You know, Churchill, sent, he's got a settler out here too. Since Churchill actually has metals connected, he might be able to smack some of these barb cities. There's a great spy, probably the least valuable early great person to get. <laughs> Alex says, yeah, no happiness resources? No, he does not. That's true. What's his luxury situation? Uh, pretty bleak. He has wines and he has um, silver up in the north. So, I mean, there are some sources for happiness here, but uh, certainly not as much as some of the other leaders. No early ivory, for example. Does not have the furs. Like, actually, I don't think these have not been connected yet. So it's not like the other leaders are doing enormously better. There's one resource for over there. That Churchill has zero happiness resources. Augustus has zero happiness. So it's not like he's the only one. Uh, Mao has zero happiness resources, so... Boy, these people just need to research mysticism. I don't think anyone has researched mysticism yet other than um, Wayne Kopek, who started with it. So they all don't have expanded borders anywhere. But to um, the credit of Sitting Bull, he's at least expanding down here. Like, he's at least founding more cities. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. He's up to seven right now. Wayne Kopek has six, I think. Uh, one, two, three, four. Yeah, has six right now. He is building Temple of Artemis, but it looks like he's actually going to finish that reasonably fast because he has marble connected. All right, yep, great lighthouse done. Uh, so that's also significant. Mal has picked up the minority religion of uh, Wainakopak. So they are not in the same religion. Not surprising given that Machu Picchu is right there. Yeah, this is actually a fairly, with industrious and marble, this is not really a very expensive wonder at all. And the deity cost discounts. Because he gets 30 production per turn into this. That's a 10 turn build. Makes it much more reasonable to build that. Anyway, Augustus is ongoing. Uh, oh, he's finally building a settler, you guys. He's finally building a settler. Holy cow. Better late than never. But uh, it feels like he may have just trolled his game too hard. <laughs> um, and Mao has also gotten another city here. Boy, there are a lot of warriors outside the city of Illinois. This would be huge for Mao if he gets this city. It'd be huge if he's able to snipe that. Oh man, Churchill, are you gonna try to box in Augustus that much more? Looks like Winnicopic has his medals connected now. Where is this Churchill settler? Go oh man, oh, what is Churchill doing? He is really being aggressive with this settler. <laughs> <laughs> Churchill, you troll. <laughs> Although I would be concerned for him because this city's going to pop borders in four turns. This is a, a pretty legit flip risk now because this city is going to be swallowed up and Nottingham could be in trouble too. <laughs> uh, who, now who's trolling the troll? <laughs> anyway, this is a very weird opening for Churchill. Settling right up on top of this. Uh, yeah, these borders are going to pop in four turns. And he still doesn't have mysticism. He's researching sailing. So, okay, whatever. Uh, iron working from Augustus is noteworthy, except he, he needs to expand borders. The iron does nothing if he doesn't expand borders. <laughs> Wait, did Augustus finish that settler? Yes, here it is. It's right here. Anyway, what a, what a game we've had so far. <laughs> pretty Pretty silly stuff. Anyway, uh, wow, another settler coming out of Cuzco. Jeez. That's just a... Oh, no, there's already a settler on the map here. Jeez. Okay. I guess Wainakop is just going to take all the land between himself and uh, Alex. This probably is going to go there. Unless there's another... Oh, unless he's going for the furs, that could be a possibility, too. But I suspect he's just going to go right here. Man. Is this just another financial runaway here? Uh, this city could get auto-raised, potentially, because it is Archer against Chariot. Uh, and Chariots don't get defensive bonuses. Let's see what happens. All right, Chariot won pretty easily, so no auto-raise. Uh, while we were focusing that, Sitting Bull continuing to expand. He's been expanding pretty well here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight cities now. And uh, Moundville locks down a gems resource. And it looks like he did finally get um, mysticism because there's totem poles under construction. So good for him there. And Mao is finally going to unlock mysticism as well. Uh, Mao's connected 
copper, so he probably will get this Barb City relatively soon. Not once he walks over um, axes. And uh, the only problem is, though, look, I mean, he's boxed in, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. He's basically done. There's no more room for any more cities. Um, I mean, the map is filling up, to be sure. Um, but, like, Sitting Bull has room for more expansion. Winokapa could probably get another city in the north. He just finished a settler, didn't he? Uh, yeah, he's got another settler here. The three Western Civs all on ironworking before mysticism. Yeah. But um, with uh, when the Incans are in this strong of a position coming out of the land grab phase, they're going to be tough to catch. Not impossible, because diplomacy, we know, can go do a lot of crazy stuff. Not impossible, but could be rough. All right, so uh, Rome has now expanded its borders. It did hit the culture percentage margin. And so this city is now 97% Roman. <laughs> So now there really is a flip risk here for these cities. 4% uh, chance of revolt per turn, and I guess this one hasn't... I guess we have to wait one more turn for it to pop up. Why does this not have a revolt chance? Is it because there's three defenders in there? I don't get it. This. Oh, wait, does this not actually put culture on that? No, it does put culture on that tile. I don't understand, then. Well, we should probably check to see if anyone is plotting war. So, Wina Kopak is, <laughs> apparently. Sitting Bull is not. Mao is not. Churchill is. And Alex is. No. He doesn't have metals connected, so no. Augustus, I would not expect to be. All right, so let's see who. Let's look at the diplomatic situation. So, Wina Kopak does not like Sitting Bull. Um, that's his least favorite target. I wonder if that's who he's... Hmm. I guess we'll see if he chooses to go after someone. The other one was, uh, Churchill. And he's just cautious with everybody, so who the heck knows. But, uh, if Churchill's plotting war, the most likely target's Augustus, because they have all this border tension. Augustus did finally put down another city, you guys. So. Um, Wynakopic would probably be better off just looking to snowball as tech lead as opposed to attacking someone, but, um, who knows? I guess he does have some border tension with Mao over here, but this would not be an easy city to capture. Anyway, we'll see what happens. It's still early. Wynakopic should just, like, tech away, not try to get involved in early fighting. So it looks like Mao attacked this barb city and killed one of the archers and then lost a whole bunch of warriors. We'll see who makes a play on that spot. Uh, Alex has been able to get another city down here. Nasus. He's been expanding to the south. One, two, three, four, five, six. None of, he has, does not have mysticism, so no borders expanded anywhere. 16 turns, slowly limping to ironworking. Yeah, he's pretty far behind in tech, isn't he? <laughs> pretty far behind. And this is another settler for Wynakopic. Is he going to settle there? Oh, boy. <laughs> Poking the bear, that is Alex. Um, but Alex has picked up Wynakopic's religion, so... That will improve relations between them. Not a ton at first, yeah, so pleased. Alex being annoyed with Sitting Bull certainly means he's more likely to go after uh, someone like that. But uh, Wynikopak's already on mathematics. Once the early calendar, which is a smart play, get those calendar resources in, uh, underway. He already has ironworking, so he can chop down the jungle too. How many cities does he have right now? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right, just the same as Sitting Bull. It feels like more because they all have popped borders, whereas Sitting Bull doesn't have any expanded borders yet. It feels like more. You think Churchill's axe rushing Augustus? I wouldn't be shocked if he is. I don't think that'll work that well. I mean, I think Augustus is the most likely target. And now Winnicopic will sign open borders because he has early writing, get early libraries. We know how the financial snowball works. About the worst thing he could do would be to launch an early war with no construction and just suicide units into a neighbor. <laughs> what? <laughs> okay, two huge things happening there. Number one, <laughs> Nottingham liberated to Rome. Number two, Mao converted to Wina's religion. So now all three northern leaders are all sporting uh, Taoism. That's a big pickup for Augustus. He was looking pretty dead in the water, but uh, you know, another city drops Churchill to last place in score. 
So uh, Mao is now pleased with Wynne Kopic. Again, we know these leaders can declare war at pleased, but um, they're all pleased with one another now. They, all, they can all attack each other, but they're certainly less likely to do so once they're all pleased. Oh, hello. Here comes Wynne Kopic's stack. Uh, it looks like his target is Sitting Bull. If I'm... Yeah, it looks like Moundville is his target. Now, this city may be auto-raised. I don't know if it's ever hit size 2. Which would be a bit of a shame for Wynacopic if he goes to the trouble of capturing this only to auto-raise it. Um, and City Bull's not really an AI leader you want to be fighting with the protective, but it looks like that's what's going to be the case. Maybe this city is hit size two. Oh, we have double war declarations on the same turn. Let's go, baby. Churchill, and now Churchill declares war. He just liberated the city, and then he declares war. <laughs> wow, what a, what a troll game. Anyway, so we go straight to two wars from zero to two uh, on the same turn. And let's see what everybody's uh, power situation is relative to one another. So when a cup X first in power, Augustus is fifth, Churchill second. Doesn't seem like a huge difference. The GNP bar graph is or chart is starting to get pretty absurd. Production, oh boy. Feels like the Incans are a little pulling a little bit ahead, but uh Sitting Bull is not going to be an easy target. This is probably not who Wynakopek should have gone after. If he had just gone and smacked the Barb City instead, that would have been much better. Uh, he will get this city, but I think it's going to be auto-raised. So I don't think he's actually going to gain anything. And Churchill looks like he's just going to walk into Nottingham because it appears to be undefended. We'll keep an eye on both of these fights. Oh no, it was apparently it, it had hit size 2. That's a big deal. That's a, that's a big deal because that city has gems. And uh, it also, again, the other thing it does is it blocks off Mal from anything to the west. Like, it'll just be straight Incan territory all the way down here. Yeah, Augustus was able to hold. Um, he it looks like he whipped an archer in this city, which uh, obviously won because it has 5 XP. Now, wh now, whether it can hold against this stack, I don't know. Kind of tough to hold territory when, like, Churchill can attack from this tile. Let's see... But uh, Nottingham has walls in it now, and it's on a hill, so I don't know. And that's a that's a gorilla to our um, archer, so that's going to be a very tough unit to crack. Um, and uh, for the high piece weight leaders, this is not really what they want to be doing: is slamming units into each other. Um, Sitting bull on monotheism is noteworthy because no one has that religion yet. Yeah, no one has the monotheism religion because Wynakopek doesn't have it, and no one else has that. Um, well, the smartest thing Wynakopic could do would be to just sign peace right now and stop fighting this war and then just go back to developing. I don't think he's going to do that, but that would be the smartest thing to do. Churchill built those walls and now he's losing because of that. <laughs> Boy, this guy's the worst enemy of Alex and Mao. I wonder if Wynakopic can get his buddies to come down here and help out against Sitting Bull. Mao is still focused on this Barb City. Alex is, uh... Still, sad. I mean, there's still room to settle over here. You know, if uh, Augustus and Churchill, so like macro picture, if these two are tied up fighting one another, that does clear the way for Alex to grab these um, jungle, grab more cities in here. And uh, look at this. He did pick up the copper on the northern coast. The city is absolute garbage, but it will get him copper and silver. So it's probably worth founding. Um, I don't see Alex wanting to backstab Wynakopic. I guess he could, but it seems so much more likely that if Alex plunges into a war, he's going to hit someone on the southern side of the map. Like, he does not like Augustus. He does not like Sitting Bull. So, can declare war at pleased, but um, has other targets on the south side of the map. He might want to go after more. Anyway, uh, I wanted to continue to see if Churchill has any success here at Nottingham. Nope. <laughs> nope. Just suicided all his units into... Augustus over there. Well, there's an incoming shrine for Wynakopak. Again, the smartest thing for him to do would be to just walk over here and take this Barb City. But, let's see. He's probably going to head towards Sitting Bull, though. Uh, decent stack. Like I said, probably won't make much progress until he has Catapults, because um just hard to make progress again. Like, Sitting Bull's protective. He's going to spam walls. He'll have protective archers. Hard to make too much progress. But, uh, like, this city's not on a hill. This city's not on a hill. 
this city's not on a hill. The path is open to just go a conquering once uh, once uh, can, uh, catapults are in play. They won't be for a little while, but um, like they're coming at some point. So, uh, and there's the shrine. Before you guys ask, it has nine cities, or Dallas though, thus far. So not, not a lot of spread yet. Again, Wayne Copic really should just sign peace and take this take Bolger and take um, Illinois. That would again be by far the best play. But he is pushing on Snake Town instead, which doesn't have walls and is not especially well defended. And we're gonna have a competing religion in the south. So monotheism religion goes to uh, Sitting Bull. But like one of the things we should keep in mind is just look at the scorers right here. Wynakopek is so far ahead in score, it's pretty crazy. Um, <laughs> he is very far ahead. And uh, oh, he actually did send a unit to go attack this Barb City. Got two swords over here. They don't appear to be targeting that. And Mal's got a stack over here, so Mal's gonna get that. Wait, what? What? <laughs> I wasn't even watching that because I didn't think there was any chance he would actually capture that. Okay, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Let fantasy team, let's go. <laughs> I was like, wait, what? <laughs> it's true though, that city didn't have many units in it. Um, now, this city could get recaptured by these units, but it can also get reinforced by this stack. So, wow, okay. Um, is Wynakopic just going to walk through this game and not even break a sweat? Because it kind of feels like that's what's happening right now. What do the demos look like? Well, um, in terms of power, HC is pretty far ahead right now. And then Mal's in second. I don't suppose he's plotting war. Nope, not at the moment. He is plotting war against this barb um, city. And Churchill just cannot crack this city on a hill with the Gorilla 2 Archer. No chance. Churchill will need to get um, construction before he has any chance. So this war looks like it's probably just going to ruin both of their games, which was all caused by Churchill deciding to troll by settling up. Again, going back to macro picture stuff, this game is going very, very well for the low piece weight leaders. Wina Kopek is fantastically strong. Um, Sitting Bull is currently losing a war to Wina Kopek, and the other two high piece weight leaders are fighting each other. So this is looking very, very bad for the high piece weight leaders and very good for the low piece weight ones. Um, anyway, let's see if this city gets taken back by Sitting Bull. I think Wina Kopek will just reinforce it, though. Yeah. Like, he just reinforced it, and... I am, again, continue to be shocked that Wynakopic is having this much success without catapults in play. Um, so there's only one archer left here, so Mal should get this. Although, wait a minute, wait a minute. Wynakopic moves first in turn water, doesn't he? Yeah, he moves before Mal. It's uh, Augustus, Churchill, Wynakopic, and then the three leaders. So he's got a random chariot here. If that chariot wins this battle then um, Wynakopic will get this city too. Is that actually going to happen? Let's see. Uh, no. The spear attacked and didn't kill the archer, but the chariot didn't attack either. Huh, okay. So that barb city is still sitting there with one archer in it, just like wide open to anyone capturing it. By the way, Augustus still has not connected iron because he has not expanded borders in this city, but he does finally have a monument, so he'll have iron for Praetorians soon. Coming down the pipeline soon. Sitting Bull is known for building military and not using it. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Was this his only source of copper? Holy cow. Did he just lose his only source of copper? Oh my god, that cut off Sitting Bull's medals, you guys. <laughs> now, he does have iron over here. And he's researching iron working. But for the time being, and he has iron down here. But for the time being, he has no metals. <laughs> for right now, he can't build the... Um, but he can build his uh, his his unique units resourceless, right? But dog dog soldiers don't need copper, so woo! Thank goodness, dog soldiers don't need copper to be built. Uh, I am still curious to see what's going to happen here. The the this chariot would have decent odds to win. Then again, it is a city garrison two archer, so maybe not. Oh no! <laughs> That's so bad for Mal and so good for the Incas. The random chariot. Just takes the city. 
Oh my, this game could not be going better for, for Atlanta Cop back. Let's go, fantasy team. Let's go. <laughs> and like everything has gone amazing for him in this game. I can't believe how well this game is going for him. Yikes, maybe maybe 70% of the fantasy contests knew what they were doing. I mean, this city almost looks like it'll just culture flip to Winecop. Uh, but it's probably going to get captured by Alex, who does have units over here. I mean, the art, the like orange blob of the Incas is just, it really feels like it's getting out of control in this game. Uh, and he's about to unlock calendar ages before anyone else. How many calendar resources does he have? One. Uh, they're all luxuries. Oh, wait. He's got one, two, th three. Three? Yeah, three different resources. All Plus, man. Plus, he's got religious happiness. So all his cities will be like size 12 when everyone else is like size 7 cities. Yeesh. Well, I don't want to say this game's over because the diplomacy could still do weird stuff. But I do want to say that the Incas are looking mighty strong right now. I mean, mighty strong right now. Anyway. Uh, okay. So there is another war going on over here. <clears throat> And Augustus seems to be doing better in that war. Uh, but in practice, just neither side can really do much because there's no catapults. By the way, Augustus is still building wonders in his capital, even uh, even as this war goes on. So I don't think Wynakapa can make more progress because he doesn't have catapults. And like you're not really going to crack dog soldiers and archers in cities behind walls. But um, I can't imagine he's too far off from catapults with the way his economy is rolling. He has connected now. Yeah, he's got the gems connected. I guess he has the sea connection. Yeah, even though he doesn't have a road down there yet. Just feels like uh, he's <laughs> so much stronger than anyone else in this game. I mean, this war is just going nowhere. It's just dragging them both down. I know Augustus is second in score, but I really don't like his position because he hasn't expanded. Oh, and he just founded his own religion. Uh-oh. So he used his oracle to pick up a religion. Was it Theology or Code of Laws he picked up? Uh, Code of Laws. So he'll swap into that, and now he'll have a religion. So now, in addition to all of the other problems of the high peace weight sieves, they're going to have Hinduism in Sitting Bull, and then Confucianism, or what is it, Judaism, in um, Augustus. So they won't even have the same religion. Meanwhile, on the northern side of the map, they're all singing in Taoist harmony, because they all have Wynakopak's religion, all of them, because uh, he's been spamming them with missionaries. So, yeah, it's just like these guys are all working in harmony, and it's the good leaders that can't get along. Pretty crazy. Is Alex plotting? Great question. He is. So he doesn't like Augustus, and he doesn't like Sitting Bull. Again, he can plot it pleased, so he could be targeting Wine and Cutback, but it's less likely. Not impossible, but it's less likely. Um, I would be a little bit surprised if he attacked Wine and Cutback, but... And Mao also is apparently plotting war. So he really doesn't like Sitting Bull. Wow, everybody dislikes Sitting Bull. Um, of course, he can attack can attack Wynakopic. They do have border tension. So it's not impossible. But uh, those are the ones we have to keep an eye on. I will try to see if I can spot Greek stacks or um, Chinese stacks building somewhere. That's probably the one way Wynakopic loses the game. It's a, th a three-way dog pile on him right now from all of from uh, his neighbors. But I think if it's just one of them attacking, I think he's okay. He just can't get caught in a three-way war. So there's Augustus converting to yet another religion. <laughs> it is true that Mal does no other neighbors. That I mean, that is a problem. Mal can't go anywhere else. So, but Mal is a lot weaker. <laughs> Still, uh, Wino Kopek really, what he should do is just get sign peace and get out of this war that's going on right now. Would probably be his best move. Um, at least until he can get construction. So, like, Mal is building a stack here, which could be intended to attack the Incas, but, like, Mal is not remotely close to construction, so I don't see him really cracking cities that have 60% cultural defenses. It's hard to see that happening. Maybe he could go after, like, Illinois because it's a brand new city and it's not very well defended. I don't know. Wenakopek's not that far from feudalism either because his economy is so good. So, yeah, I mean, these. what's the power situation like anyway? Yeah, so Mao is definitely building up. 
And that could be a really big moment in the game too. Who Mal goes after? If he goes after one of the sub, if he goes after one of the southern civs, I'd say it's almost in the bag for Wine and back If he chooses to go after one of the southern uh, leaders, Alex, I can't see where he's forming his stack. He doesn't seem to. He seems to be very early in the plotting process. Doesn't really have an army ready to go yet. <clears throat> and of course, Rome is still at war with. Um, England, but that war seems to be a total stalemate. Um, yeah, so just kind of treading water right now, waiting for the other leaders in the game to make their move. Wow, that is a fairly large stack right there. Again, without catapult, it's hard to see it making having too much success, but it is a big stack. What just happened there? Oh. They, it was captured by the Native Americans, and then they signed it back in a peace treaty. Okay, well, that's a bit odd, but a, good, a very good result for Wynne Kopak. He now gets out of this war where he probably wasn't going to make any further progress, and now can go back to developing. And if he would get attacked by Mao or Alex, now his army is freed up. Augustus is on construction. That's pretty noteworthy. So that couldn't have gone much better for Wynne Kopak. He took Moundville. That opened up the path to take Illinois, which is a very valuable city. And uh, he even got this bonus prize down here, um, which is going to be hard to defend. But now he can go back to uh, not having to worry about military. Anyway, so over here, this war is still ongoing. And then we have the question of what Alex and Mal choose to do. If Mal chooses to attack now, that would be a disaster for Mal. He would probably be first eliminated if he attacks now against Wynne Kopek. HC going for currency. I like that. If he goes currency into construction, oh, he should also get metal casting because he's industrious. A lot of good stuff here. I mean, let, let's just, I don't want to spend too much time here, but like here's the ink and tech tree. Augustus is the only other one who's kind of comparable in tech, but like compared to, say, Churchill, still missing a whole lot. And, or Alex, whose economy is terrible. Um, the only one who's kind of keeping up in, in research is Augustus because his capital is really strong, but he, he's not going to scale very well because he really has very little beyond his capital. Um, like right now, again, they're right now their numbers are comparable, but like why not Copex 40% research Augustus is, I guess, 50%. So, um, but like, look at the expenses for why not Copex. They're so much higher. Once he gets infrastructure in all these cities, um, like his research rate's going to explode because he's financial. Like, there's only five cities for Augustus, and he can't expand anywhere else. He's out of room. Alex, while we've been watching this, Alex has been slowly expanding to the south. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight cities. Whereas, like, Churchill can't expand. Sitting Bulls, I guess there's room for one or two more cities down here. But the map's pretty full at this point. One, two, three. And, and like, Mal is stuck on six cities. That's just not really enough to be competitive. You guys think that um, Alex is plotting against Augustus? He might. Oh, Yes. Yes, he is. <laughs> yes, he is, because you don't put your stack here unless you um, are sending it to the south. So we just got to wait and see when that stack moves out, which it probably will shortly. Uh, I mean, the Augustus versus Churchill War seems to be a total stalemate right now. I guess Augustus maybe can... I wouldn't say either of them has the upper hand, though. They both look very weak. Maybe Praetorians are enough to swing things, but this stack from Alex feels like a, you know, sort of Damocles type thing hanging over him. Uh, anyway, so, wait, why not put putting a lot of military? I was like, is he plotting war again? Apparently not. All right, we'll just look at the graphs real quick. So GMP, again, it's close right now, but a huge amount of this is just culture from Augustus's wonders. I think Augustus is really screwed long term. Uh, production, Wanda Kopek seems to have a clear edge. Food, he, wow, wow did that take off. He is well ahead of the field. Power, he's also first in power too. Mao is kind of flattened out. Maybe he stopped plotting? And culture, yikes. Okay. Did he... No, nope, still plotting officially. Well, we'll keep an eye on him. So, uh, I mean, there's got to be a lot of pressure on Mao to attack because he's, you know, he's out of room to expand. If he goes after Wine Kopek, it's purely just a border tension thing. Wow. Double uh, open borders requests. Oh boy, look at poor Xi'an. <laughs> Wait, another great... Where is Snake Town? Oh, it's Wine Kopek. Okay. 
I was like, wait, another religion was founded by, um, <laughs> another religion founded by uh, the Sitting Bull, but no, this is Wynne Kopbeck. This probably will not play any major role. Is this the theology religion, I guess? Yeah, he must have popped a great person. He probably used a great prophet to light bulb that, but opens up theocracy civic if he wants. This city, I believe, is now, yeah, getting pressure, cultural pressure from, <laughs> from Machu Picchu, which is a culture monster. Pretty good stack here, but I wonder if by the time it attacks, like Wynne Kopek has maces and longbows. I mean, if Mao's going to attack, the longer he waits, the worse it is for him, because HC is only going to get stronger. So Churchill adopting the religion of the civs up north that will make uh, those leaders like him more. Alex has still got his stack hanging out there. This war between Churchill and Augustus seems to be going absolutely nowhere. <laughs> there's a Barb City down there that hasn't been captured yet. Uh, there's a Barb City right here as well. I'm a little surprised that we'll see if Wynakopek targets this. I think Sitting Bull and Wynakopek are targeting this Barb City right now. Uh, oh, well, there it is. All right, Mal. I think the moment to do this was earlier in the game. This, uh, well, all you have Mal, all of you who have Mal for second, I don't know about, I don't know about this. Wynne Kopek, uh, sure looks a lot stronger to me. Um, but we shall see. His stack is over here, so it's not exactly in position. I just said I didn't like Mal's position in this game. So the, the only real danger for Wynne Kopek now is if Alex comes slamming into him. Because, like, right now, Churchill's... I guess Sitting Bull could come back again. And he could be in a two-front war that way. So there is that possibility. Uh, and Sitting Bull is not going to like him. Because Sitting Bull... Or Wynne Kopek did declare war on him. But there's the Mausoleum. Building Hagia Sophia as well. Like, this stack will not succeed against this city. It has 60% defenses. Even though it's not on a hill. Also, Wynne Kopek apparently does not give a you-know-what, because he's got workers just right here. Is that because there's no horses in Mal's territory? What's Mal's resource, strategic resource situation? Uh, yeah, no horses. No iron either. Ooh, that's a problem. No iron. He has copper, but um, the iron resource that was near his territory got taken by the immense culture of Machu Picchu. So no horses and no, um, no iron means he can't build anything other than axes, spears, and that's basically it. Just axes and spears. Um, no swords. So that's kind of brutal. Uh, yeah, I've been keeping an eye on the war between England and Rome, but it just it's not going anywhere until now that it, maybe with maybe with catapults it can go somewhere, but right now it doesn't feel like it. And I keep an eye on keep watching Alex's stack too. Oh, there it goes. Okay. Well, you guys ready for the the kickoff of Alex's war? This, this may be the end of Augustus right here, because we know what's going to happen as soon as I hit next turn. This stack's charging over the border. Um, I thought it was going to. All right, well, he still declared war. I think he got bounced by that stack. I think his stack got bounced, but um, that is going to allow a little bit more time for Augustus to get units. Um, I don't think he has enough units to stop that stack incoming. This is war number four. Uh, but it does allow a little bit more time. Still, two-front war for Augustus is not what he wants. Not at all. Uh, all right, do you want to see Mal stack just commit suicide here? Because with no catapults, this, this ain't happening. Well, they just didn't even try, apparently. Oh, remember that stack that was targeting the Barb City for Wynne Kopek? Yeah, it decided not to target the Barb City. It decided to target Xi'an. Um... And on a hill, 50% walls or not, uh, that's four units against, you know, 15 units. So that, that city's dead. And now Mal's army is kind of strung out in Incan territory. Uh, this is not looking good for Mal at all. As the Hagia Sophia gets captured too. Uh, so the trade-off is the Native Americans were able to pick up that city. So Sitting Bull still looking like the second strongest in this game, but um, if Alex can get going, he could pretty easily take over as second strongest. 
So uh, RIP all those Alex first to dies. I don't think Alex is going to be first to die. Not in this one. Wynacopic is closing in on double the score of the second highest AI. Uh, let's see what happens over here because there's a bunch of Mal units kind of in no, no man's land. Uh, Wynacopic gets to move first, so he could hit these stacks and try to clean them up if he wants. Let's see what happens. Well, it looks like this stack did get attacked. Some of those units died, and then the others turned around and walked to the north. I still think these units are basically dead meat. It's mostly spears, which are not going to do a whole lot, certainly not against axes. And uh, they spears fare poorly against swords as well, although better than against axes. Well, uh, anyway, Wynacopex on construction, and Mao has five cities. So I think that once construction's done and the catapults are in place, the... Uh, this is pretty pretty over. Uh, the only other thing would be is if Sitting Bull's plotting. He's kind of the only one that can intervene here, but uh, he's not plotting war. All right, where's Alex going with this stack? Is he targeting Kumai? He is. Um, now there is an axe that's going to be finished, and Chichen Itza was finished for um, uh, Chichen Itza was finished for Augustus, so he might be able to hold this attack. He doesn't need that many units with the forty-five percent bonus. Alex's stack is a lot of units, but they're mostly not that great. I mean, he's got one sword, one phalanx, two chariots, three spears, four archers. It's a lot of units, but it's kind of garbage. So I actually don't think he takes this city. If that axe finishes, I don't think he captures this at all. Let's see. Uh, did he attack? I think he got hit by a catapult and didn't actually attack. I think he took some collateral and then stopped to heal rather than attacking. Uh, meanwhile, Churchill having any success? No, doesn't look like it. As far as I can tell, they are still stalemated right outside the same location they've been the whole game. But uh, perhaps with catapults we'll see a difference. No one seems to be making much headway on either side, though. Oh, anyway, here comes the remnants of uh, Mal's stack. Looks like they're going to try to attack Xi'an, which is, makes more sense than attacking elsewhere. I don't think they succeed, but what are they? This stack is just wandering around in Wynacopex <laughs> territory. Yeah, uh, catapults will be online soon, and I don't anticipate things going very well once that happens. The calendar resources are all hooked up now. It's like, just look at the happiness situation. Look at all these resources for Inca. So many health, all the strategic resources, everything except stone. Five happiness resources, about eight or nine health resources. Like, compare to Mao, like, look at this. He has one happiness resource. His cities just can't grow in the same way that Wynacopex can. Like, if you zoom out on the map, all these cities have room to grow quite a bit. Um, they've, like, just opened up a lot of happy room to grow. Uh, whereas, like, all the, other, all the other cities are mostly at the happy cap already. Like, two resources. That's why early um, zero resources. Alex has one. Like, early calendar is really good for the AIs because it allows them to just grow, grow, grow. Um, and it's really cheap for them to grow on deity. All right, has Alex attacked yet? He's still healing right now. Uh, but this is all this has given enough time for um, Augustus to reinforce that city. So that city's not going to fall. Well, maybe if this stack joins in, Alex desperately needs to get to construction. But uh, Alex's tech is uh, not... Oh, he is going construction. Four turns, 18 turns, 26 turns. He'll get there eventually. Still doesn't have mysticism, but whatever. Who needs mysticism, right? Uh, Mal just picked up a great general, so I'm not sure what happened there. This stack is still wandering around in uh, in Incan territory. Still wandering around in Incan territory. <laughs> Units are getting awfully low. There's a City Raider 3 axe in there. Uh, Wynacopek is pushing a stack board, but it's not going to do anything until he gets Siege, which he's still a turn or two away from. Uh, well, Alex killed more units than I thought. He didn't capture the city, but he did kill some of the units. Of course, he promoted some of them as well, but he killed some of them. Now, if he'd waited until this stack was here and they both attacked at the same time, he probably would have taken the city. Uh, over here at Nottingham, again, they're just 75% on a hill. That's never happening. Not until Churchill gets catapults, which he does not have. Yeah, he will need construction. Boy, everybody's economy is garbage, except Wynacopek, and to a certain extent, Augustus has decent economy as well. Uh, horseback riding is going to unlock elephants, because he has ivory, of course. So that gives, will give him an 8-strength unit to attack with. 
All right, so that stack finally got cleaned up. Almost made it back into Mal's territory, but did not. Even got a great general out of it. I just want to check in periodically on Sitting Bull to see if he's plotting war, which he isn't. Uh, Sitting Bull's economy is, but you know what? It's 1 AD. This is a good time to check everybody's research rate. So Augustus is 69 speakers per turn. Chocho's 46. Sitting Bull is also 46. Alex is 32. Yikes. Mao is 38. And Wine and Cop 127. So he's like double the next closest. It's a good thing his economy is not going to scale very well. Oh, wait, he's financial. His economy is going to scale unbelievably well. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, back here, uh, I don't think this city is going to fall. Basically, it's just going to drag down Augustus. Yeah, another another failed attack. Some of those archers are getting pretty promoted now. But hey, you got to, I was going to say a great general. It's actually a great scientist. Now, where is this stack going? Churchill, you need catapults. You can't make any progress until that happens. Oh boy. Well, we got a wind of X stack here, but uh, that's not happening. Again, he needs to get catapults and build up before he'll be able to capture anything. <laughs> oh, there's also a sitting bull right here. <laughs> like literally right there. So I foresee more conflict between sitting bull and uh, wind of X. But like with the way Winokopic's economy is accelerating, he'll he'll eventually just hit units that no one else can act can deal with because they're so so much more advanced. So trying to keep an eye on all the wars, but I think we're kind of in a state where no one's going to make much progress until someone puts together a real siege stack. Oh hey, Alexander and Augustus signed peace. Well, that war went nowhere. So Alex just threw a bunch of units there, and nothing happened. <laughs> So that precisely nothing happened there. Uh, meanwhile, Churchill, of course, is still continuing his war. Not settling the tundra down here, just continuing to throw units at Augustus. But without catapults, he has no chance of succeeding whatsoever. Absolutely none. And these Wynacopex stacks are not very impressive right now. I don't think Mal can keep up long-term in production, especially not once the elephants start showing up. And then maces. Can't be too far away from maces either. Yeah, um, Wynacopic needs to like put together a, a genuine stack instead of these random units that are kind of wandering around. Uh, if he can take down the defenses with catapults, he can, uh, he can capture one of these cities, but he has no chance otherwise. Like Shanghai is not very well defended. Send a stack of 20 units up there with Siege, and that city will fall. But we'll see what Wine of Back actually does. Uh, so the ones who are back at peace are Alex. Checking to see if he was plotting war. Sitting Bull, not plotting war. The others are all tied up in fighting right now. This is the makings of a decent stack over here. In time. Actually, a lot of the, you know, I was going to say a lot of Wine and Back cities aren't even building military right now. He, was, he, he, he is one of the leaders who will keep pushing infrastructure even while he's at war, which is both a strength and a weakness. Yeah, uh, these, this conflict continues to go absolutely nowhere. <laughs> Wine and has not really put together a good stack after the start of this conflict. He's kind of spinning his wheels here right now. There's a little mouse stack over here that uh, we should probably just check to see what the power situation is. Yeah, I mean, one of X way ahead, but he's not, hasn't decisively run away from it just yet. He's also just, all right, well, changing up his uh, civics. Well, theocracy plus vassalage, uh, that's a lot of experience on his units and getting metal casting for the extra production, the cheap forges. All right, that's a shrine for his minority religion, which already has nine cities following it. His majority religion has 24. Holy cow. It's a lot of money. <laughs> anyway, we'll see how much longer this war goes on. Wynakopek didn't start this war, so he probably is not as eager to keep fighting. I can't believe how long the Augustus versus uh, Churchill war has gone on. The two of them are just in such bad shape as a result of their endless war that has no cities have changed hands. Just Nottingham being gifted over at the start of the conflict is it. 
So I'm keeping the camera over here because it seems like the only place where something might actually happen in this current round of fighting. That's a somewhat better stack, but still hasn't really put together like a real stack. I think it's because when a Kopic is unlocking so many buildings, he wants to keep churning out a lot of his buildings, like this city building the market. I think that's part of the reason why he's not uh, pushing tempo more. And like, then he'll probably stop to build the forges. So it keeps him from just rolling over Mao. But um, I mean, again, like Mao is just now looking to get construction. Wynakopex almost finished the classical era and he has like half the medieval era. So we just want to keep checking in periodically on whether Alex or Sitting Bull are go heading back to war. Like that's a better stack there. Oh, here we go. This is this looks like his first uh, real attack attempt to go down here. Needs more units, but um, actually, this is none of these units get defensive bonuses, weirdly enough. But those catapults will be enough to start taking down the city's defenses. Actually, another stack up here. Anyway, Sitting Bull is in second place in score, not plotting war. He's pretty peaceful, even though he was attacked by... Uh, where is Sitting Bull? Even though he's furious at Wynna Kopak, he's still not that likely to go to war. And uh, Alex, he's back to plotting war again, interestingly enough. I wonder if his war timer has run out with, um, uh, with Augustus. So he really dislikes Augustus. He also hates Sitting Bull, too. <laughs> So he really dislikes those two leaders. He may still be in enforced peace with... Uh, um, oh, wow, that stack got cleaned up. That didn't happen. <laughs> Looked like that siege might be starting, but Mal apparently was able to kill it because it, there were no um, axes in there. It was all mounted units. So he just attacked with a bunch of spears and cleaned that up. Still, Mao uh, just doesn't have the same production capacity, and he doesn't have the same research rate, so I feel like he's getting worn down over time. But there is some danger for Wynne Kopec in keeping this war going, in the sense that uh, like he could get attacked by somebody else. It could be Alex, it could be Sitting Bull. Like, there is a lot of border tension between Alex and uh, Wynne Kopec as well. Oh, and by the way, yeah, these two are still at war, but nobody can make any progress in this. At least Churchill's about to get construction. Maybe then he'll be able to set up a proper siege. But it just feels like neither one is strong enough to defeat the other. Um, like this, now that this city has, it's on a hill. So like, remember how I said this was a really good fortress for Mao? Well, now it's a really good fortress for Wynne Kopec because it's on a hill and he's got longbows in it. And I just don't see, if it's properly defended, I just don't see that city ever getting captured. Plus Wynne Kopec looks like he's finally put together a decent stack here. Yeah, there's five catapults here, um, and there's even more. This stack, if it start, if it targets a city, it probably will capture it. Just what's he, what what he wants to do with this? Yeah, if that if this stack was attacked by Mao, it uh, didn't work for Mao. Still, not a lot of uh, activity going on there, and and it gets worse with Statue of Zeus still cranking out those wonders too. So machinery for crossbows. He actually hasn't really gone after the military techs very much at all. Like machinery, civil service. Oh, he's oh he has guilds queued up. Ooh. Uh, so this could be knights and Mal not even having feudalism. So it could be knights against archers. Ouch. That uh that's a bad matchup. Well, is Sitting Bull plotting war? He is, and I suspect Wine of is his target, so um wow, he actually hates Churchill too. Interesting. Wow, he actually kind of hates everybody, but he especially hates Wynne Kopak, so I expect that Wynne, he will return to war. Maybe then we'll see a more interesting fight. Wynne Kopak has not really pushed forward into attacking Mal very hard, but uh, don't be surprised if he... And uh, it looks like, yeah, and we saw that Alex was plotting war. Where is Alex marshalling? All right, so Alex could very... This could turn into a three-front war here, you guys. This could turn into a three front war, which is, uh, which is a, you know, a, there is a chance that Wynne Kopec could be in trouble here if he gets hit by three leaders at once. Are Mal's medals plundered? Um, no, he has copper back here, so he's fine in that regard. 
But uh, he won't be able to build swords because he has no iron and he, and he can't build uh, mounted units because he has no horses. Knights especially would just annihilate anything Mal can field right now. Like it's all um, axes and spears is what his army is. And like they just lose very, very, very badly to knights. So there is some danger here though. Like the, this is not a sealed up game just yet. Because um, like if they wait to attack until after Mal's dead though, then the game is probably over. Because I don't see how Wynakapa could lose if he has all of Mal's territory. Plus... Um, his huge land grab. But yeah, there it is. There's Alex declaring war on Wina Kopak. So, so much for the shared religion. <laughs> All right, that's war number five in this game. And like I said, I suspect that Sitting Bull is plotting to join this war too. Unless, where is his stack? He doesn't seem to have a big stack anywhere though. What are we looking at in terms of power? For each of these sides. I mean, Wynakopic might be... I think he's strong enough to 1v2. I don't know if he's strong enough to 1v3. I think he can 1v2 without too much trouble, though. Uh, he's got this huge stack back here. Knights, again, will slaughter anything that Alex can field. Alex at least does have swords. Um, and he's going to have horse... Ar does he have horse archers? I think he has horse archers. Uh, no, he doesn't have horseback riding. Does have construction, though. Does Alex have ivory is the other question. Uh, he does not have ivory, so no war elephants. Uh, knights will kind of destroy anything that either of these sides can field. Uh, but does Alex have catapults in this stack? He does not have catapults in this stack. Can, But he does have a lot more units over here. So this city probably gets captured. And, unless there's more. I mean, Longbow is in a city on a hill at 40% to fend pretty well. But I feel like that's just too many units. How, my god, how many units did those longbows kill? Jeez. This longbow has 13 experience. Uh, those two longbows might actually hold this city. Because that longbow can triple promote to City Garrison 3. Um, well, let's see what happens. Yeah, wow. Holy cow. He went Gorilla 2, City Garrison 1, which is a little silly. Should have just gone City Garrison 3, but geez, okay. <laughs> it was two longbows. Now, I think that Wynakopek whipped another longbow in there. I believe he whipped the longbow as well because um, the city was threatened, but Jesus Christ. That was a lot of units. <laughs> Alex just got annihilated by like three units because he, he didn't have catapults in his stack. Does he have construction? I believe he does have construction, right? From what we saw. He does have construction, but I guess he hadn't had time to build the catapults yet. Well, that makes... Oh, man. And then this Doomstack is apparently marching somewhere. Yeah, that's a that's a pretty good stack. And it has catapults, so we'll take down the defenses. Wait, how did Mal get War Elephants? Oh, he has Ivory. Oh, he has Ivory by one tile. He's going to lose it. If he loses Shanghai, he loses the Ivory. He has ivory on this tile here. So that's a pretty nice... Oh, man. This is a big stack over here. Well, Alex... Uh, wow. His entire stack just died on the first turn of the war. <laughs> just lost all of his units. So this is like everyone racing in to try to fight the, the raid boss. Everyone running in to try to see what they can do. Um, and Mal might not be around for much longer. I guess that's one way to deal with a 3v1, just kill one of the opponents as quickly as possible. So yeah, uh, Sitting Bull, if he wants to get in this war, he has to do it sooner rather than later. Uh, again, I continue to check in on Churchill and um, continue to check in on the Churchill plus uh, Augustus war and just nothing is happening there. Just nothing, so... So Shanghai's defenses are, I mean, this city is dead as soon as the defenses are down. And then they're one tile away from the capital, so it's not like this stack has a long way to walk. I think Mao is not long for this world, you guys. Uh, Alex charged forward, and it looks like his, looks like these units are just dying. I don't know what a city garrison two archer is doing <laughs> out here, but it looks like the longbow in a city on a hill was enough to repel that attack. So swing and a miss from Alex, at least so far. 
lot of elephants. And knights were just unlocked as well. Oh, here comes a new stack. Uh, now, does this stack have catapults? Yes, it does. But this city has had time to reinforce. So uh, I suspect there'll be time to stuff. Now, it still might get captured because we know how effective catapults are. Um, but at the very least, the, there's been time for Incans to reinforce over there. Alex on mysticism? Oh, boy. All right, so Shanghai said, oh, wow, that that ivory is still controlled by uh, Mao. <laughs> Has control of the ivory by one tile. But I suspect Beijing's the next city to get targeted. There's still so many catapults here. Uh, once the stack heals, I mean, Mao's on four cities, right? One, two, three, yeah, four cities. He is very lucky he has this, he's very lucky he has cultural control over this style. Very lucky. Because otherwise he wouldn't be able to build war elephants, and that is by far the best unit he can build. If he loses that, then all he can build is axes and uh, spears. Because he still doesn't have uh, feudalism. I don't know, I don't see, I mean, now that the knights are on their way, I don't see... I don't see Mal being able to hold. So it's Sitting Bull. If Sitting Bull does not attack Winnicottback right here, the game is over. That's the only way this game is not an Incan runaway. Because right now the Incas are 1v2ing and they're still winning pretty easily. And this war, again, is still ongoing. But uh, we do have Churchill with catapults now. So... That's something. This stack looks like it's healing. Needs a medic unit in there to heal that big stack. And Sitting Bull looks like he's building a stack here. So again, strongly suspect that the Incas are the target. See if they can get peace with any of these other opponents before, um, before that happens. Let's see, one, two longbows, two crossbows. It's not that many units. It's once again, not that many units in here. Of course, does have the city, does have the um, uh, city on a hill bonus, but this might this attack might have more success because it's being launched with without the city defenses in place. Still, that one longbow with the <laughs> city garrison and guerrilla too, pretty pretty good. And now I guess this stack is headed for the next target. I guess. Let's see if Alex can. <laughs> survive another sec. Oh, now there's a knight in that city too. <laughs> Alright, well, here we go. Where's the sitting bull stack? Oh, there's another stack down here. Okay. Alright, well, it's 3v1. Everybody tag teaming Wynna Kopak. <laughs> this is like what we saw with Bacal last week, but uh, even more one-sided. <laughs> Everyone in the game coming after him. Um... It's uh, it's a little bit of a shame. So he's he's definitely going to lose Snake Town down here. He does not have the forces to defend this, but um, has this force again? I wonder if he would sign a peace treaty with Mal just to get out of this war. I think he needs to be down to a one v needs to get this down to a two v one, not a three v one. All right. So what happened there? Ah, uh, well, just lost a city. So Alex again, all the minnows in the game banding together to try to take down the leader. <laughs> Like I said, I said this game was not over because there was the potential for a 3v1, and uh, that's what we're seeing right now. So even though Wynakopic is vastly stronger than any of these individually, uh, the dipl his diplomatic situation is actually pretty awful. Um, it's a little it's a little shocking, in fact, that he has uh, he's converted three other people to his religion, and yet he's still in a three front war. Kind of crazy, honestly. Uh, he's actually friendly with Churchill, which is amusing. Uh, this is how people feel about him. Yeah, Alex and Mao um, honestly should like him a lot with the shared religion and shared peace weight, but they don't just because uh, um, they don't just because of the border tension, I guess. And because that's that's the thing about the low peace weight leaders, though, because they plot where it pleased, you can't ever be sure that they're actually on their on your side. So it looks like Wynakopek's backing out of Mao's territory. In fact, he's probably going to lose Shanghai here because he's moved all his uh, units out of that territory. Uh, we finally have a war, finally have an end to the, the war that went on forever. Achieved literally nothing between them. Uh, and if you're curious about power, uh, kind of a bad loss for Wynakop back there. He lost a lot of units somewhere. He's about to lose Snake Town sooner or later. 
whenever this stack gets around to attacking. So he has not won the game yet. For all it felt like the game was a foregone conclusion. Um, being in a three front war is really, really bad for the AI. Um, I mean, like, look at, look at the cities if you, if you want to count them up on the map. So, like, Buena Copic, by far the most territory, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten cities. But, like, and Shanghai just got captured too, by the way. I don't think that popped up on our screen because I don't think I'd refreshed the map since then. But, like, he can easily crush any of these opponents. But, like, look how many cities. He's got, what, like, 12 cities, but, like, Five cities for Mal, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine cities for Alex, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight cities for um uh what's it called? Sitting Bull. Like it's uh it's pretty one-sided. It's pretty one-sided. Now, could a human manage this? Of course. Humans can always can play always war against all of the AIs. Um, but this is really dangerous territory. Uh like I said, if they all refuse to sign peace. I think Koina Kopek probably dies. I think if all the AIs insist on fighting to the death, the question is, can he break someone off and get peace with one of them? Um, but like, if they all just spam units constantly, it's hard for um, Koina Kopek to keep up because even though his units are far better and he has the most territory, it's just hard to fight that many opponents simultaneously for the AI. And like, they're all spamming units out because like he had most of his units in Mal's territory. Um, because that's where he was fighting an offensive war. But like Alex just lost his entire first stack. But you know Alex, he's gonna he has the super high unit train emphasis. He's just gonna spam units out. He's not gonna research. He's just I mean he's on freaking polytheism, but he's just gonna spam units. Um and that's like his strategy, just unit, 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 unit the whole game. So it doesn't work 1v1, but if you're in a 3v1 with your allies, it can work. So that's why uh, that's why I kept saying the game's not over yet. I said if I said if um, if Alex declared war or what was it? I said if Sitting Bull attacks someone else or Alex attacks someone else, the game's over. But you know there was the potential there because Wayne Kopek chose to attack Sitting Bull early on, which was definitely a mistake. Should have just focused on defending, and Sitting Bull probably would have left him alone. Uh, but like now, Moundville's almost certainly going to get captured too. And there's a limit to how much territory you can lose. Um, it is noteworthy that this ivory, by literally one tile, was in Mal's territory. If it wasn't, Mal doesn't have elephants, and Mal is completely helpless. But because he has that one tile's worth of ivory, he's spamming elephants everywhere, and that actually gives him a unit he can fight with. Like it just—it's amazing how that one resource on that one tile makes a huge difference. But it really does. Uh, the game turns on fall thing, on small things somehow, sometimes. Okay, Xi'an Defender. I don't know what that means. Uh, yeah, that city's not very well defended. It's just uh, like the AI just kind of gets overwhelmed when it's being attacked on so many different sides. It doesn't really seem to understand how to fight back. Because like that's another city going down. Yeah, I, I, I was saying this before. I think... Oh, well, Peace Treaty sign. So that's... Definitely something Wayne Kopek needed was getting peace with Alex. He lost one city. If he loses one, he can deal with that. So that immensely eases uh, Wayne Kopek's situation. So Sitting Bull took those two cities. If we go back to the power situation, um, much more manageable to deal with Mao and Sitting Bull by themselves. So we'll see if... Uh, when a Kopex able to stabilize here. So he's got a, a decent number of units from Mal running around up here. But uh, he will need to stabilize before he can look to get a new offensive going, certainly. Well, that's going to help. He's just got a Mausoleum Golden Age out of it. Uh, the funny thing is, Alex still really likes when a Kopex. He's, uh, <laughs> he's plus two pleased with him. The one he really doesn't like is... Uh, Augustus and Sitting Bull really doesn't like Sitting Bull either. That would be hilarious if Alex now turned and attacked Sitting Bull. <laughs> these castles from engineering are also going to uh, presumably stall out these attacks a little bit more too. So we'll see if Sitting, if uh, Wynakopex is able to get peace with one of these two. He has certainly been the focal point of this game. Like everything's kind of been focused on him throughout the entire game. Sitting Bull has an awful lot of... Um, he doesn't, let's see, longbows, horse archers. 
This city Bulgar is very vulnerable if Wynikopek's ever able to focus just on Sitting Bull. So he's been pulled back to dragged back to the pack for sure. His tech lead is still enormous, though. Um, he is very, very far ahead in tech. So if he's able to hold his city to any degree whatsoever, uh, hold his territory to any any degree whatsoever, it's uh that could be the big difference. Anyway, so I'm trying to see if anyone else. All right, so apparently Augustus is plotting war. That's all Hoinakopek needs is for Augustus to come piling in and attack as well. <laughs> Augustus just hates everybody, though, so who the heck knows? Churchill is not plotting war. Not at the moment. Uh, Hoinakopek, again, since he was able to get peace with Alex, I think he's in better shape. He, he does need to watch it over here at Illinois, though, because that seems to be the next focus. Now, he's counterattacking over at Bulgar, and that's a pretty good stack. Oh. Wait, what? There was still a barbarian city on the map? Okay. Oh, and uh, uh, Churchill has quietly used this time to settle two Tundra cities and take that Barb city. So he's trying to get back in this a little bit. Augustus still is stuck on the five cities. Or no, he founded, he founded this one here, Ravenna. So right now the offenses are, there's one here, and then there's another Wynna Kopek stack, which is a bit larger over there. Oh, and Mao is also apparently pushing forward on this city. <laughs> Illinois is not very well defended. It has a castle in it, but uh, it's not very well defended. You would think that Wynakopic would just take his huge stack that he has over here and go, you know, slap down this attempt to capture Illinois. We'll see, though. Okay, well, a couple... A couple uh, horse archers just suicided into that. Actually, it looks like Sitting Bull just threw away his whole stack. But uh, Mal has now, now has a stack over here. But he'll probably stop to bombard, and that gives the defenders time to reinforce, potentially. So it looks like the Sitting Bull force has mostly been cleaned up at this point, as Wynakopek builds the Sistine Chapel. Uh, he is focusing over here on Bulgar. Oh, guess who Augustus is about to attack? Yep, he's going to attack Sitting Bull too. <laughs> He's going to get attacked again. So uh, if this takes place, Sitting Wynakopek uh, will have been attacked by every leader in the game except Churchill. <laughs> it's just incredible how far ahead he is. And like every leader is lemming themselves, like tossing themselves into it, into him, just desperately trying to slow him down. But here's the thing. Alex is plotting war and he can't be plotting war with Wynakopek because he's already in a war. He's uh, He has enforced peace with Wynakopek. So he's about to attack someone and it's probably um, Augustus. Probably. Anyway, entertaining stuff to be sure. Hey, at least the game's not boring, right? <laughs> at least the game's not boring. <laughs> but uh, it is kind of amazing that these, le like Augustus running across the map to go attack uh, the Incans. All of you who have the Incans are like, Jesus Christ, what does this guy have to do? <laughs> it just He literally gets attacked by every leader in the game. Everyone except Churchill has attacked him now. Uh, so Sitting Bull's offensive seems to have just totally stalled out, um, at least for the moment. <laughs> but uh, Mao now has an offensive coming in. And again, it's all based on uh, War Elephants. I still am amused that this, like, why not Kopak? Just pillage this tile, literally pillage this tile, <laughs> and your war is a, a hundred times easier. Anyway, so now these two stacks are right next to each other. Let's see if they actually clash. Well, there was a stack there. <laughs> Wynakopek just killed the stack instantly on the first turn of the war. So, okay. Uh, it did slow down his offensive at Bulgar, but he just killed that stack instantly. But uh, I think Illinois is probably going to get captured by Mal's stack. Probably. Just too many threats to deal with at once uh, for Wynakopek. So it, he really is like he's playing always war. It's honestly incredible. If he had not been attacked like this, he would have just run over the game already. Like the game is over if he just is fighting one opponent at a time. Like Mal would have been dead by now and then he's unstoppable. But it's just attack, 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 attack. It's pretty crazy. Um, <laughs> it feels unfair. Like I don't know if that's the right way to put it, but it feels unfair. Uh, anyway, so he captures that bar former Barb City. 
And Mountainville is extremely vulnerable to attack. Uh, like it's, you know, it's got a couple longbows and that's it. So punching back to be sure, but it's just hard to deal with all those opponents simultaneously. So yeah, I mean, he's winning these trades for sure. Just a lot of opponents. Anyway, so Alex's stack is building here. Again, I don't believe he can plot with Twine Akata because I believe he's still an enforced piece with him. And another Sitting Bull stack just got cleaned up. Um, but Illinois, as I said, is probably going to get captured, probably, just because there's not that many defenders here. Then again, there's two pikes. I don't know, actually. Pikes will just annihilate the, the elephants. That is a terrible matchup for elephants. Maybe the catapults will do enough collateral, though, because pikes do have low base strength. Uh, I don't know. We'll see. I know I say that a lot. This attack should come in any turn now. Uh, looks like it was enough after all. Just barely, though. Then again, these units do get a chance to promote. Still think this attack will succeed. Just barely. It's a shame that, uh, again, it's a shame for Wynna Copback that I keep saying <laughs> that one ivory tile. Without that ivory, Mal can't build any units that do squat. Um, <laughs> anyway. So, Alex, where is Al what is Alex doing with this stack? It's a gigantic stack. We know he's plotting war. Still hasn't made his move yet. So, I suspect Illinois will probably get captured here. Um, one crossbow can promote, but those longbows are at 9 XP, so they don't the longbow and the pike don't get to promote. So, that should probably be enough. Maybe if there's a whipped pike in here, it could hold out, but probably gets captured. Oh, oh wow. So Moundville taken, and then a horse archer ran over here and reinforced. Wow, those are some beat up uh, war elephants, but I don't think this city can hold any longer. So another city recaptured. Actually, this offensive is going very badly for Sitting Bull right now. He got the initial strike, but um, now his units are not faring very well against uh, against Wina Kopak, who who is striking back recapturing some of these cities. Can I zoom in on the Chinese ivory tile? Yep, I mean, it's just an elephant camp. Pretty pretty normal. I'm surprised Mao hasn't tried to super peace. Like, his city, his civ is a wreck. He's got unhappiness from fighting brothers and sisters in the faith, whip unhappiness, war unhappiness. Remember, a statue of Zeus is over there on uh, Wina Kopek's part. But uh, I think Illinois is going to get still going to get captured here. Even though Wynakopa gets to move first and reinforce, I just don't think he has enough in here. Yeah. Just barely. Two war elephants. Just barely retook that city. That is a rather large stack right there on the part of the Incans. Rather large stack. Uh, so how close is Wynakopa to hitting the next generation of tech? We know he has knights. Researching Divine Right right now. So he's still a little ways away from rifling, but we'll see if he chooses to emphasize it. I am also still curious about when Alex is going to send his giant stack into battle. Yeah, Sitting Bull is not having a good, not winning these these trades right now. He's losing pretty badly because it's mostly Wanakopek has been has been focusing heavily on uh, Sitting Bull recently. So um, like most of the Incan units have been heading south to fight. And uh, they've been cleaning up Sitting Bull pretty badly. But that's allowed Mal then to, um, you know, fight back a little bit more. Have some success at taking Illinois. It said Mesa Verde here looks like the next target. Yep. There's one trebuchet in this stack. Oh, Augustus has a new stack incoming. Jeez, it never stops with this guy. It's not a very good stack, but it's something. It's like it literally never stops. There's always another, there's always someone else attacking when a cop back. It's crazy. They're like, and there's another stacking coming. It's like, geez. 17 XP Praetorian. Yeah. Random horse archers throwing themselves at Moundville for some reason. 
this really is like an always war game. It's it's nutty that everyone is like literally the whole game is just ganging up against one leader. It's it's so crazy. The one leader who's running away with the game, they're all trying to stop this leader. I guess it makes for a dramatic game. It doesn't feel very fair though, as I've said before. And here comes more units. <laughs> like this city's going to get captured because um I mean, Augustus is just running all these units towards him. But uh, it does look like Alex is about to declare war on Augustus. So maybe Wana Kopek will finally get some, some help from somebody. So yeah, Bulgar gets captured. But then uh, <laughs> in comes Alex. And just waiting for the war declaration to pop up. Yeah, Augustus, this was not the person you needed to go after. So that's eight wars. It looks like my 11 wars might be a little low for this game. So Mal is just holding for the time being. All right, so this city, Ravenna, has no shot whatsoever. Wait, where's the... Alex's big stack is still over here, though. He actually didn't move in with that many units. Oh, then now his stack moved. There it is. Oh, he's probably going to capture Bulgar, isn't he? Oh, well, 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 look at that. <laughs> finally, Mal, Mal finally signed peace. But uh, this is Mal pretty much signing his death now, because he gave back Illinois. He's trapped with five cities. Wynakopic is probably not likely to forget that Mao went after... Oh, actually, never mind. He's actually he's actually um, friendly with Mao. Okay, so he actually won't declare war on Mao, although Mao might come back for him. So suddenly things are slowly turning in Wynakopic's favor. Now he's just trapped in a two-front war, and he actually has an ally in one of those conflicts. By the way, Churchill not plotting war. Again, don't be surprised if Mao goes back to war with Wina Kopek down the road, but um, I just feel like he'll be so far behind. I mean, he does, he's researching currency right now. I feel like Mao can never really keep up in tech with uh, Wina Kopek. Like, Bulgar's going to get hit by Alex's army. Yep, no surprise there. It's completely engulfed in inking culture. <laughs> So Augustus says, the, and then I wouldn't be surprised if uh, Alex kills this stack too, because he can see it. And then there's a siege going on at Mesa Verde. Uh, sure, we'll sign that just to get you to stop spamming. This is a pretty well defended city, but it's not on a hill. And I think that the knights make a difference in the fighting. Yeah, while all this has been going on, Wynakopek has still been building every wonder under the sun. So that's not crazy enough. Yeah, this stack right here seems like it's getting hit by some of the uh, Greek units. Good guy, Alex, helping out Wynakopek. Yeah, Mesa Verde lost most of its defenders. Yeah, 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 you both want me to join the war. Pretty bloody battle, but... Uh, the trebuchet, actually, this city might get captured with the trebuchets taking down the defenders. Alex's stack is not, for whatever reason, Alex has not moved into Augustus's territory just yet. He's still got his army here in Bulgar. Let's see if Mesa Verde finally falls. Yep. Well, now that, now that this is basically a one-front war... I guess technically it's still a two-front war because the Incans are still, or the uh, Romans are still fighting against the Incans. But uh, now that this is increasingly turning into a one-front war, because let's face it, most of the Roman units are going to get occupied by the Greeks. Oh, sitting, and they sign peace. Okay. Well, that is bad news for Augustus. <laughs> That's bad news for Augustus because he is now in a 1v2 with Alex and Wena Kopek. <laughs> so if you had Augustus first to die, well, yeah. 
Snake Town was given back. In, oh, wow, you're right. Snake Town was given back in the treaty. Wow, he got all of his territory back. That's amazing. You guys were saying it in the chat. It took me a minute to spot it. Wow. So Wynak Kopek has survived the 1v3. And now that he survived the 1v3, it's difficult to see someone overcoming his absolutely enormous lead in technology. You know, the only one who's close to him in tech? Yeah, it's Augustus. Guess who's about to die? Yeah, it's Augustus. Um, well, anyway, this stack now, we'll see how much longer this stack lasts. Because the Incans have now, are now in a position to counterattack. Or will he just walk right past this stack and let it capture his city? No, uh, no. When Kopek did clean up that stack that was going after his city. So that attack has failed, thanks largely to the help of Alex. And now the question is, how long does Augustus last in this game? When Kopek, I'm pretty sure, has open borders with... Um, yeah, he has open borders with Alex, and that's it. Wow. And Churchill, interestingly enough. So yeah, he has easy access because he's open borders with Churchill. That was a good question, though. That was a terrible war for Sitting Bull. Yes, that was a terrible war for Sitting Bull, for my second place Sitting Bull. Although, given the fantasy contest situation, I'm reasonably pleased if uh, Wina Kopek just wins. I'm okay with pretty much any outcome that has him winning. Because I want, I'm, I'm actually more interested in winning the fantasy contest because I'm not in great shape in the uh, picking contest. Anyway, Wina Kopek going free religion is kind of interesting. He loses a lot of the shared faith benefit with... Uh, his neighbors, like he's only plus one with Alex, but uh, he's actually still loves Churchill due to shared civics. Man, does he hate uh, Augustus and uh, Sitting Bull. Even with plus five from shared civics, he still really hates that guy. Churchill's strategy of turtling is succeeding. Uh, yeah, maybe, maybe he can make it onto the final just by turtling and not attacking, trying to present a low target. Anyway, so here comes the Alex units over here. We're actually down to one war in the game for like the first time in ages. I think by the next time that the other leaders could come after Wina Kopek, he probably has rifling by the time the next coalition can form against him. He, let's, he actually gained a city in that war against Sitting Bull. He gained Mesa Verde. Oh, and, uh, and Bulgar, although I guess Alex ended up in control of that. This city should be under his control, but of course it can't flip back. Again, I wouldn't be surprised if Wina Kopek comes back and just smashes these people later in the game. So for right now, all the action's right here. Wina Kopek just picked up the free great merchant at economics. He is still at war with Augustus, isn't he? Yeah, he is still at war. Yeah, he is still at war. I just didn't see any Incan units over here, so I was like, what? Alex looks like he is in position to get this. Boy, Alex's tech is just so awful. He's still early classical, isn't he? He, yeah, wow. I mean, look, this is, so this is Alex's tech tree. And this is Wina Kopek's tech tree. He has every tech you can see, plus like eight more of them. If he went for early rifling and just laid the smack down, that would be pretty hilarious. But since he's Wina Kopek, he'll probably go... The, probably go for democracy and pick up liberalism and then go for a rifling after that. Anyway, I keep waiting for the Incan units to show up over here. So far, it's just been all uh, Greek units. But they'll show up eventually. Actually using this time to build more infrastructure, building universities everywhere just to get further ahead. I was wondering if Churchill would be plotting, but he is not. And Mao is currently not plotting war either. So it looks like we can just keep the camera focus over here and watch this siege at Ravenna. Again, Augustus is the only one who has tech even remotely comparable to um, Wina Kopek. And he is the one who is almost certain to die here. Uh, yeah, Mao, still, Mao actually has total control on this tile. If you're curious about the exact amount, Mao is 4,100 culture points. Wina Kopek has 200. This is not flipping away from Mao anytime soon. He also has two cities putting culture on it, whereas uh, Xi'an is only one city. And Xi'an's a captured city, too. Machu Picchu, I don't think, actually puts any culture on that tile. Although, actually, it's about to hit 
80 percent borders 20 40 60 80 uh it will machu picchu will start putting culture on this tile in three turns so maybe that will actually cause it to flip but we're getting to the point in time in the game where elephants aren't that important like once rifles are on the scene whether you have elephants or not is irrelevant because rifles just kill them anyway oh here's an incan stack down here is when a cop like attacking from a weird direction or something i don't know uh, Wynakopic really should just not be involved in this war because he can't really pick up territory. Anything he captures will just be surrounded by enemy cities anyway. So he doesn't really need, even need to get into that. Did Alex just culture bomb Vilcabamba? No, he didn't. He still only has 24 culture in here. So another shrine for Wynakopic, his third shrine of the game, which, uh, where did he build that? The Mahabadi, that's the Buddhist holy city? Is this a double holy city? Uh, it is. Wow, double holy city. You know, he might go culture in this game. He's already got an awful lot of culture in his core cities. So Taj Mahal incoming for yet another mausoleum golden age. Oh, here's a, here's eight, a few stacks at least. It'll be hard to make progress against Chichen Itza castles though. 125% cultural defenses. Uh, Alex is throwing a lot of units at Ravenna and not succeeding very well. Augustus also picked up uh, gunpowder, so he'll have muskets soon if he doesn't already. And Augustus might be going for early rifling, because he's on printing press. Uh, yes, actually. Wow. Augustus Caesar. Early, early rifling tech here, huh? He's going to have rifles long before anyone other than Wynakopic, so maybe he's not going to die quickly. <laughs> it's kind of amazing he has so few cities. He's uh, still on five cities. What is it? One, two, three, four, six cities. So we looked at the diplomacy situation before. It uh, it didn't change things too much. Wynakopic was still pleased with uh, his neighbors, even though he's in free religion. So, like, if you look at Alex, Alex is pleased with him. Mao is pleased with him as well. Despite all the fighting, still pleased. Wynakopek is, um, where is he? And he's, they're all pleased. So he's pleased with his northern neighbors. He, the ones Wynakopek dislikes are Augustus and Sitting Bull, which makes sense. He actually likes Churchill quite a bit because they have the shared religious bonus right now. So, yeah, there's some Incan units running around down here. Um, I mean, if he could capture Rome, which has, like, 8,000 wonders in it... <laughs> Uh, Augustus is, a lot of his economy is actually coming from the Great Lighthouse. So, like, it's, look, I mean, he has five trade routes in his coastal cities, which is, like, half of them, because he has so little territory. You'd think that, uh, Wenikopic would just focus this city, but no. Oh, wait, he just went mercantilism? That was a mistake. Why is he getting plus two trade routes everywhere? He doesn't have any overseas cities. Um, oh, it's because he has the harbor. I guess that's why. So yeah, Wynakopek's bringing units down here to siege up Rome. I don't think this will succeed. Especially not with rifles incoming, but who the heck knows. Yeah, Wynakopek is not going for early rifling. He's going for econ stuff. Already has constitution. Um, so he has not... Again, has not 100% sealed up this game, even though it feels like he's in a dominant position. Just because he hasn't managed to run over anyone. Yeah, so like Augustus, I thought for sure he was going to die here, but uh, no, he's still hanging in there. Largely because his tech is very good. I mean, I don't think his tech scales well into the late game because he just has so few cities and like great lighthouse trade routes will run out eventually. Um but he's still hanging in there, to be sure. Also, his diplomatic situation is atrocious. Everyone hates this guy. Like, look at Augustus, right? <laughs> Churchill annoyed. Wynakopek furious. Alexander furious. Mal cautious. I guess Sitting Bull kind of likes him. Sitting Bull doesn't declare war pleased, so safe in that regard. But, um, like, you can't really be in a position where everyone hates you <laughs> and also be the smallest sim in the world. Not a good situation to be in. By the way, we're almost 200 turns into this game and no one has died yet, so that's a thing. Alright, there's the Taj Golden Age. Which, again, he's got the Mausoleum for the Extended Golden Age. Rebuilding infrastructure in these cities. Is Wynakopek now going the rifling route? He at least is picking up printing press. 
All right, just printing. Oh, he wants democracy. Okay, so he'll build Statue of Liberty then. He wants Statue of Liberty. That's, uh, yeah, he's already, uh, it's amazing he hasn't just picked up liberalism yet for free. It's just totally sitting there because the only other one who can take it is Augustus and Augustus doesn't even have education yet. We'll see what he does. Not be lighting rifling, so for better or worse, but 12 turns of golden age are going to accelerate his research a good bit. Again, I don't think this attack on Rome has any chance of succeeding. Oh, here comes another leader after Augustus. <laughs> now it's Augustus playing always war. He's Now he's the one in the 1v3. <laughs> it's a good thing he is going for rifles. Otherwise, he probably wouldn't have much of a chance. Now here's, all right, here's the Churchill stack. I don't think this is going to have any more any more luck at taking down uh, one of these cities. Man, no one can seem to punch through these uh, Chichen Itza defenses. So, oh wait, actually that attack did succeed. Nottingham got captured. Hold on, I totally missed that. It's uh, not usable because it's so surrounded by culture, um, Augustus's culture, but uh, it does deny him one of his production cues. Oh, what the? Mal's back again? Okay. <laughs> and now Mal's back again. All right. Well, that means that uh, the pressure will be off um, Augustus to some extent. But uh, it does mean that Wynakopic will become... Oh, this is a pretty good stack here. And Shien has been dangerously left dangerously undefended. But I don't think this is a good move for Mao overall. Wynakopic's in the middle of a big infrastructure push. But he will presumably start building units. Well, look at that. Wynakopic actually lost a fair bit of units there. Churchill's actually tops in power for the moment. Um, well, sooner or later, he's going to have to go for rifling. When the AI is at war, they I believe they are more likely to pick techs. I mean, he's taken out of like half the Renaissance already. Doesn't have gun... Look at this. He doesn't have gunpowder or military tradition. He easily could have had either one. But sooner or later, he's going to have to take them. Yeah, Mao is really... Really looks like he's trying to commit suicide. <laughs> Still, Xi'an is probably going to get captured because look how... Again, the elephants. It's all elephants. <laughs> all the elephants. <laughs> I, 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 I hate to keep harping on this, but the one tile ivory is literally the entire Chinese military. It's all elephants because he can't build uh, swords and he can't build anything that requires iron. And he has no horses and no iron. So it's all elephants because this tile is one tile in his borders. <laughs> Un unbelievable how that works out anyway so Churchill's leading an offensive down here Alex's offensive seems to have stalled out so again the danger for Wynakopic is Alex signs peace and then comes dogpiling in here again um, <laughs> for another round so Xi'an should get recaptured um, but Wynakopic is not very far from rifles and at that point that's I don't know why. Also, why didn't he build a castle in this in this city? Very poorly defended and no castle in there either. Anyway. So Churchill certainly has a lot of units. Uh, I mean, I guess he has a chance. If he can hit before... If he can get the defenses down and hit before replace, before rifling finishes, he's got a shot to take down um, Augustus. He's got a shot there. Anyway, though, uh, we're, we're 200 turns into the game. Let's just take a look at the graphs real quick. So Wynakopek, so far ahead in tech. Sooner or later, we'll get rifling. He's in a golden age, so he can't. It's so far ahead in food. Power is not that far ahead, because he's been mostly pushing infrastructure during these turns. But like in terms of beaker rate, Augustus is 300, Churchill 160, Sitting Bull 286, Alex 140, Mal 100, yikes. And he's at 1,000 beakers per turn. And he's, and he's even not even running as much gold. He, he actually can run 0% gold on the slider and uh, still, yeah, like, look at this. He's, he should just be running 100% gold. He's got 1,900 in the bank. So he'll be able to mass upgrade as soon as he gets to rifles. But um, he's not there yet. Like until he gets rifling, he hasn't quite finished the game yet. But he's so far ahead in tech. It's really crazy. He's also ahead in culture too. All right, now I believe he's probably on rifles now. Yep, and that will basically swing the door shut for um, for Mal because he'll go from a medieval army up to a modern army just like that. But still has to take a little bit longer to get. Yep. All right, so.
danger here for Wynna Kopek, though, because Alex just signed peace with Augustus, freeing up Alex to jump back into war with him again. <laughs> but um, he may be able to take down Mal before that can happen. Anyway, while that's going on, let's watch this offensive on Rome, because Rome is by far the best city in the world. It has 10 gazillion wonders in it. And Augustus is not quite to rifling yet. So if this stack can succeed in taking down this city, um, then Augustus is pretty much donezo because this is this is what's powering his entire economy. I mean, he has the pyramid, the great lighthouse, the Colossus, the Oracle. Not that the Oracle does anything after it's done. Chichen Itza, Notre Dame, Great Wall, and then Moai. So like, if this city gets captured, it's just a complete disaster. But if he can hold out for a few more turns... Oh, never mind. <laughs> it just got captured. <laughs> if he can hold out for just a few more turns... Oh, wait, it just got captured. <laughs> Churchill getting it done. So Churchill just jumped way up in terms of score because he gains all those wonders. And Augustus is pretty much done at this point because he has four cities... And he no longer has the great lighthouse. Yeah, now look at his trade routes. Remember how he was getting five five commerce, five commerce, four commerce, four commerce. Yeah, now he has one commerce per city. His economy just basically died as a result of that. Wasn't he at like 300? Yeah, he was at like 350 beakers. Now he's at 147. His economy just got murdered there. Well, anyway, Mao seems to be pushing forward this offensive pretty good. Why not cop back? What you doing, man? Maybe stop building all those security bureaus and caravels and actually train units to stop this... Uh, <laughs> these <laughs> Chinese elephants coming through. I know that elephants do not do very well against rifles, but he's, he needs to hold out long enough to get the right. All right, here comes his here comes his stack over here. Statue of Liberty, ten turns. <laughs> Security bureaus. So there's a good chance that Illinois falls. I think this city does get captured, but I think it will probably get recaptured shortly thereafter. Oh, Xi'an got retaken by Wana Kapek. That didn't last long. And Illinois... All right, Illinois was not almost completely taken out. It's down to just two catapults and a caravel. All right, Churchill is still healing up after his attack, so we probably want to watch here. So yeah, Xi'an did not remain in the hands of uh, Mao for very long. Just refreshing the map here. And rifling is due next turn. Let's see if Mao can capture Illinois in one last blaze of glory here. I think he will, but I don't think he'll hold it for very long. Yeah, we have to check on Alex and Sitting Bull again soon. All right, so Illinois recaptured. By the way, this city is size 19, so yeah, that's a thing. But um, from now on, all the cities should have rifle defenders for Inca, so it's hard to see elephants doing much against rifles. You need just unbelievably huge lopsided numbers for that to happen. All right, Alex is not plotting war yet. Sitting Bull is not plotting war. So I think Wynna Kopek will have time to roll through Mao, would be my guess. And Churchill, actually Churchill's Doomstack is moving on the next city. You know, Churchill's going to be clear, probably pretty clearly second strongest AI in the game after this, if he's able to finish up with... Uh, if he's able to finish up with um, Augustus, as it looks like he might. We could have a race for first to die here as well. Um, which Augustus seems more likely to be. I would prefer that Mal is first to die for, for the picking contest, because basically no one has Mal first to die in the picking contest, whereas quite a few people have Augustus first to die. But I think Augustus is looking more likely right now. All right, first to discover liberalism. What did he take with his liberalism? Grab astronomy. Uh, what did he grab with it? I think he took military tradition. Yeah, I think he took military tradition because he didn't have military tradition unlocked before. Well, now it's rifles and calves. So that's a problem when your army is made up of elephants and longbows. That's a problem. So yeah. Would be good if he built some actual units instead of all these universities and missionaries. Um, but all he has to really do is upgrade his current units to cabs and rifles, and they should be able to just run right over these. Like, all these elephants can become rifles. Or it can become cabs, of course, not rifles. So I don't expect Illinois... Yep, they're all being upgraded right now. 
Why not? Uh, Cloud Boy, the AI gets. Look at this. He's running 100% research at a profit because he has so many shrines. He has three shrines already. <laughs> and he's about to finish Statue of Liberty. Uh, this one's worth 10 gold per turn, 29 per turn, and 8 per turn. I mean, this city makes 88 gold per turn at 0% uh, gold on the slider. That's pretty nutty. <laughs> Elephant rifles. So, yeah, these units are getting upgraded, and that's probably it. Well, where is this Churchill stack going? It's just, like, running in circles in the middle of, um... <laughs> in the middle... I guess it's pillaging stuff, but... Augustus is slowly limping to rifling. I don't think he can get there before he's dead, though. Now his economy is imploded. So once these units upgrade, you'd expect that you'd see a stack form. And, well, Mal can't really deal with rifles and calves. This stack is almost gone. <laughs> Why not is still mostly pushing infrastructure right now. Look, he's barely building units at all. Just upgrading and, uh, anyway. So, we're more likely to see Antium fall first here. Churchill's tech is quite a bit behind, uh, some of these others. But, he's got the wonders from, he's got the wonders from Rome, and that makes a big difference. Alright. Antium slowly getting siege. Actually, not that slowly because there's three trebuchets and two catapults in that stack. All right, Alex, is he back to plotting war again? Not yet, not yet. And Sitting Bull is also not. So it looks like we're, looks like this is just uh, the ongoing combatants, no other wars in underway. Uh, so Illinois is gonna get recaptured here as predicted. Trebuchets do not make good defenders. <laughs> and the elephants just can't win these matchups. Like the, the elephant against rifle is a horrendous matchup. Just can't win that. And uh, there's really not much left for Mao at this point. Longbow, we know Longbows can't defend against Cavs. He has five cities. I would not expect them to last long. He can build maces. I guess that's something. But it's not like maces do any better than Longbows. I guess they do very slightly better because they have a higher base strength, but they don't get as many defensive bonuses. Doesn't really matter. All right, so Antium should fall soon. Augustus is still very slowly limping to rifles. Very slowly limping to rifles. And it doesn't look like there's... It looks like Wynikopek's still putting a stack together. Um, like, he's probably still rallying units. But he's still building infrastructure in his cities, too. I don't even know why he's building a market. He's running... Well, I guess he is not running... Why has he saved up so much gold, though? Whatever. I was like, why does he have so much gold saved up? He's running 20% uh, gold on the slider, even though he's got 2,800 in the bank. Oh, well. But Churchill, Churchill's emerging, doing really well here. After that bizarre trolled opening, he's just carving his way through what's left of Augustus. I thought Alex would be the one who'd roll through Augustus, but no. Missed it. Alex missed his window here, and he's currently at peace, so... He's not likely to get much stronger. So again, we'll keep an eye on this, this race to see who's first to die, but it certainly looks like Augustus is gonna be first. So kudos to those of you who had him identified as first to die. Oh geez, so many requests to cancel deals. <laughs> Why not going for steel and building the Kremlin and, and getting Oxford. <laughs> Once he runs out of infrastructure to build, if he ever runs out of infrastructure to build, his teching will take off, or his military stuff will take off. That's the only reason he's not uh, advancing more quickly. He's continuously pausing to build infrastructure as he unlocks more stuff in his cities. Did Rome pop gold? Uh, yes, that was not there at the start of the game. So Rome has also popped that gold resource. Definitely not there at the start of the game. Alex is so far backwards that it's hard to see him being that relevant. Even if he, like, attacks Wynikopek again, his units are so far behind. Like, he could take a city, but I don't think he'd get further than that. He is not plotting war still. Yep, Steel just finished for Wynikopek. Good spot there, so he'll have cannons. Let's see if he's got a stack going here. So he has... I mean, he needs more units than this <laughs> if he wants to push forward. He certainly can afford to build more units. Um, 
he really seems to want security bureaus and intelligence agencies at the moment. Not really training any units. Slowly sieging down Chengdu. Well, I guess he didn't need more units because every single one of his units just won their battles anyway. Augustus converts to Hinduism. That's irrelevant because he's about to die. So even though he only had like six units attack Chengdu, just the rifle and cab against the eagle was so lopsided it didn't matter. Uh, so that's four cities left for Mao, but there's only two cities left for Augustus, and he is follow he is fading quickly here. Doesn't look like he's ever going to get to rifling. It was the right tech to go for, but not going to get there in time. Uh, Rome, being, the, the capture of Rome was the big thing. That was what's made it uh, impossible for him to come back. So pretty savvy, just pretty savvy moves by Churchill. He was in that endless war forever that was really bad for him. But once he got peace, he settled the southern tundra, Newcastle, Oxford, and captured the barbed city of Shangyan. And then he just built up. And after um, Alex and Wynakopek kind of absorbed all the units from Augustus, after he um, absorbed all those units, after they kind of absorbed all the units, he snuck in and took the capital with his force that he built up. Ravenna is still not captured yet, kind of amazingly. Um, Wynakopek has not put together another stack yet. Again, still building intelligence agencies from what I can see. Got to get those espionage points up. Churchill's trade routes, uh, I'm sure they're better now that he has Great Lighthouse. He might be in mercantilism, though. Uh, that city's still in resistance. Uh, nothing special. He's got the extra trade routes, but they're not really worth much, as far as I can see. So we could be... And the one thing that's nice about this is about the t situation for Churchill, he uh, he's actually pretty well liked... Oh, I was going to say he's pretty well liked by Church uh, Huayna Kopek, but actually he's not. Actually, Juan Akapek kind of doesn't like anyone very much right now. Maybe because everyone's declared war on him except Juan Akapek, except uh, Churchill. This could be the game. This could very easily be a domination finish because Juan Akapek doesn't like anyone. And when he doesn't like anyone and he's that far ahead, he might just go on a rampage. I don't know. He is pretty peaceful. Uh, well, he's like moderately peaceful. But when he's this far ahead and he's mad at everybody, like once he once he finishes knocking out infrastructure and he has nothing to build, he'll just build units. I mean, he's been at war like the entire game. <laughs> I was checking on oh I was checking on Sitting Bull was I I was looking at the wrong one okay oh I was wrong yep so he loves Alex you're right I was looking at the wrong face to the getting the uh, getting the getting the various Mesoamerican confused that's embarrassing all right so he loves Alex he won't go to war with Alex he's pleased with Churchill unlikely to go to war with Churchill but man he hates sitting bull and he really doesn't like Mao I mean Mao's probably gonna die in this war um, and Augustus will be out so I expect him to come back to war with sitting bull later I think that's the big takeaway probably it, it certainly is expected to kill Mao here and then don't re be surprised if he comes back after sitting bull later again not exactly pushing forward aggressively here still building now building levees in his cities i guess he finished steam power okay <laughs> i guess he finished steam power this looks like a this looks like a pretty good city i'd have to say plus 139 culture per turn uh, this tile, the, the, the ivory tile we've been discussing the whole game is actually getting close to flipping. Not, not that it's going to matter at this stage of the game. <laughs> and Neopolis' defenses are almost down. The Kremlin gets finished. Certainly no one, I don't, no one can stop Wynakopic at this point. He's, even if it's like a 3v1 at this point, I don't see how he really gets stopped. I mean, I guess some other people are getting rifles, like Sitting Bull is on rifling. But, uh, like, by the time Sitting Bull gets rifling, he's probably going to have assembly line. Because he's almost finished the bottom part of the tech tree. Ah, uh, now he's finally putting a stack to Well, I guess. I was going to say putting a stack together, but not really. Hey, dude, maybe build some units <laughs> so you can get out of this war that's been going on for ages. Before someone else attacks you. Like, Sitting Bull is back to... Oh, no, never mind. He is not plotting war. I saw everything read it out, and I thought he was plotting war. Alex is apparently plotting war, though. So who knows? Maybe he wants to go back for another round with Wynne Kopak. Who the heck knows? I think he's even further behind than uh, um, than Mao. Actually, no. I think Alex is further ahead than Mao. 
All right, now we're finally seeing some military builds because a lot of the um, economic stuff got finished. <laughs> I don't think that stack can conquer Mal on its own, but. All right, yeah, yeah, yeah. This city has three units in it, so should fall pretty quickly. And then we'll finally, finally have our first, uh, first to die out of the way. This stack has one cannon, which would be enough to take down the, uh, oh, big big swap here. Free state property, free speech, uni, maybe he wanted universal suffrage. He does have a lot of towns and that does let him cash rush stuff with his gold. So actually in his situation, uni suffrage is not that bad just because he has so many towns. Look at all these. He is not in a golden age right now, you guys. Not in a golden age. This is Leve plus universal suffrage plus free speech. Wow, okay. Those are some nice cities. Not, not not too bad. Yeah, this should... Even though there's not a lot of units here, this should be enough to take this, because the defenses are down thanks to the frigates bombarding. Oh, okay, Alex wants... All right, well... Okay, Alex. You want the... You just want to rack up the war counter, which I'm definitely going to be too low on at 11. Probably going to be around 15 in this game. Oh, you know, uh, who moves first? Churchill or Alex? Uh, Churchill moves first. So Churchill should get the killing blow unless he chooses not to attack against this longbow. Alex definitely does not deserve the kill credit, but he might get it. Let's see. Oh, Alex with the snipe. He wanted that point for the fantasy contest. Also, Wynakopak took his city over there. But since this is our first elimination, keeping the focus over here. All right, Alex wanted the points. I don't know if that's good for me or bad for me in the fantasy contest. All right, so we finally have our first to die after ages in this game. Well, it feels like first to die should have happened earlier, but it didn't. All right, Augustus is out first to die. I know a lot of people had that in the picking contest. He was one of the more popular picks. So uh, kudos to those of you who correctly predicted that he would be out first. I don't know if you anticipated it would happen the way it happened, but he is first to die. So he is out on turn 234. Playoff three, turn 240. I say, is it 43 or 34? 34. Number confusion. 34. Did I put this on screen? Yes. Uh, so the kill goes to Alex. So Alex gets the kill in our fantasy contest. Um, so antisocial gets two points for Augustus being first to die as he's eliminated, and Alex picks up a point for Shinitiao. No, not Shinitiao. My rival in the fantasy contest. Um, I need Alex not to finish in second in this game. No, no second place points for Alex, please. Otherwise, it would have gone to... Who was, who was the other one who's in the war? Churchill? Oh, oops. I would have preferred that that fantasy point went to oops for Churchill. <laughs> oh, well. Uh, and in the picking contest... So first to die, Augustus, which, as I said, was reasonably popular, I think. Actually, not that popular. Only 10% had it. I'm wrong. I thought that was more popular. All right. Back to the game, then. Yeah, the AIs tried their best to make Wynakopak first to die, but uh, Incan's a little, little too tough. Okay. So... Four leaders, or five leaders left, soon to be four, because Mao is not expected to be long for this world. We will watch the remainder of this four, and then I think we'll try to do like a game state after this. Try to assess the game state uh, once, because I, yeah. Because this city is defended by <laughs> six catapults, and Cavs are like, all right, fine, we'll just walk in and kill this city then. Um, also, Wynakopak spamming of frigates has been removing the defenses of all the cities except Beijing, because they're all on the coast. So he's just bombarding the defenses with frigates. Um, oh, Mao was able to reinforce this city with some actual units instead of just six catapults. But, um, I mean, come on, this is, <laughs> this is not going to last much longer. Wynakopak is actually building some units. Some, not a lot. He's still... Mostly building infrastructure, but I mean, <laughs> it's just a matter of time until he finishes this off. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Poor Mal. Well, not poor Mal. He attacked he attacked Winnicopak multiple times. It's hard to feel too sorry for him. Still have the ivory. Although the ivory tile is about to flip, you guys. 8,000 culture to 7774. So then he won't be able to build war elephants either. Sitting Bull did pick up Rifling. So that's a nice tech pickup for him. Uh, here's more of a stack. It's still not like a huge stack or anything, but it's at least something. Uh, I believe the ivory tile is actually going to flip this turn. <laughs> the tile we've discussed so much. Because that's been like right on the border the entire game. Yep, it did flip this turn. Where did the units go that were on the border, though? Uh, oh, the rally point right now is in Xi'an. That's where he's rallying. And once this stack moves out, it's, yeah. Also, assembly line just finished for <laughs> the Incans. So that's a better stack, but there's a lot more here. Uh, so is anyone plotting war right now? Just while we're watching this conflict, Churchill's not... Uh, Alex is. Who does he not like? So it's probably Sitting Bull, because he is annoyed, but it would not be shocking if he went back against Huynacopak again, which would be a terrible mistake, But because Huynacopak has almost finished overrunning this, and he's just getting factories up in all his cities right now for crazy production. But uh, he might be coming back for another conflict. Sitting Bull is... Also Sitting Bull is plotting, so here we go. 3v1 on Huynacopak again. Maybe. Does Churchill get second in this game just because everyone else has repeatedly tried to kill Wina Kopek and they haven't learned the mantra of when you come for the king, you best not miss? <laughs> Does he get second just because he's the only one who's not attacking Wina Kopek? <laughs> anyway. So, I mean, we could have Alex plotting against him and who, who is Sitting Bull dislike? Well, he dislikes everyone. Um, is he too afraid of Wynakopak's military might? Nope, he would still attack him. Uh, I was checking to see if the power disparity was so high that they wouldn't fight. So here's a question. Where's he getting horses from? Someone must be trading, uh, horses over there. Not that horse archers are going to do anything at this stage of the game, but someone must be trading Mal horses so that he can build horse archers. Also, where are the Incan units? Why have they not just walked in and killed him yet? Oh, here they are. Well, again, this is definitely taking longer than it should as Alex goes to Theocracy. If you're curious about power, it's, uh, well, it's not as one-sided as I thought. Churchill, I guess, is still pretty strong. Churchill's plea, you know, Churchill doesn't declare where it please, right? I'm pretty sure he doesn't. So he could only attack Sitting Bull right now, if I remember that correctly. I believe he does not declare where it pleased. Okay, this stack literally just has to walk up to Shanghai and it dies instantly. <laughs> Mao is on philosophy, so it's not like he's close to getting better techs here. All right, so Shanghai is dead on this upcoming turn. <laughs> just like slowly watching this unbelievably over, over large uh, army finish off uh, that city. So there's two cities left to go. Building caravels and horse archers. Very, very useful to build. Wynakopek has not turned on the culture slider yet, which is a possibility because he has a lot of culture in these cities. Like, he's getting 300 culture per turn without the slider on here. So that's a very real possibility, but, I mean, look how much culture he has. Jeez, he could probably win in 40 turns if he turned on the slider. We'll keep an eye out for if he chooses to do that. Or he can just keep, you know, pushing tempo and going for space. Anyway, so we're trying to keep an eye out. Let's see if we can spot where stacks are building for Sitting Bull. And um, so Sitting Bull, I think, is in his capital. And wow, Sitting Bull has very few cities left. I just realized that. Uh, as for Alex, where is he? Uh, he's rallying in Bulgar, which suggests he's going after Wynakopak yet again. But he could also be going after Sitting Bull, too, because this is also a logical place to rally units to go hit Sitting Bull. Yeah, the ivory flipped a little while ago, but for the time being, until someone actually declares war, let's watch this. Uh, yeah, these calves can just kill this city, even though it's, uh, is it on a hill? Yeah, even though it's on a hill with 60% defenses, it's calves against longbows. I mean, they can just take this easily, and there's only two longbows on defense. 
Two longbows, two spears. The rest are catapults and trebuchets and a horse archer. So they should be able to just capture that city like nothing. Yep. They didn't even have to wait for the infantry. Just walk up and kill it. Uh, one of the longbows is at 1.4 health, and this should be able to finish it off without even taking down. Yep. Well, there's a trebuchet on defense. And this city has no defenses because the destroyers and frigates have taken out the defenses. So Alex did go after Sitting Bull. Okay. All right. Tick up that war counter. So he wasn't going after Winnicott back. That's intelligent of him. So now he'll have a shot to... Um, if I mean, it's a long shot, but he could maybe get enough territory to compete with Churchill and score for second. Maybe. I don't like Alex doing well because it's more points for Shinitiao in the fantasy contest. <laughs> anyway, um, so Alex has a very large army, but he actually is behind in tech. You note he's attacking with muskets, pikes against rifles. So I don't know if this actually goes that well for him. Um, like he is ahead in power, but his unit quality is a lot weaker. So, uh, I mean, he does have an awful lot of units. 47 units, so quantity might be enough in this case, but it's not going to be easy to take out rifles. Protective rifles, too, for that matter. So I think that's a more even conflict than it might look like, at least initially. Yeah, these rifles just slaughtered the units that were attacking over here. That's why Nakopek finishes the Pentagon. All right, so we'll, we'll look back at that in a minute, but we're about to have another illumination, so let's get a chance to uh, check this out. Wyna Kopek, who's like playing an entirely different game from the rest of the field in terms of tech. Churchill's just now getting to rifling. Sitting Bull recently picked up rifling, is now getting military tradition. Meanwhile, Wyna Kopek is like, he already has assembly line. What is he on now? Like electricity or something? Anyway, so he easily claims that. Rocketry for his second kill. Yeah, dying civ, civic swap. They do seem to swap civics a lot of the time right when they die, don't they? All right, so the Chinese destroyed. Sorry, Mal. I really didn't like Mal's position in this game. He, I think he tried to do what he could, which was continuously launch himself at Wina Kopek, but I just didn't think he had a good position in this game. So all the Mal second places. I'm sorry, it didn't happen. Okay, so um, mark this down on the spreadsheet. So he was eliminated on turn uh, 253. Okay. Playoff three, turn 253. Wina Kopek picks up a kill. His third, you know, we haven't had any leader run away with kills. No one has more than three this season. Not like the one season where both Caesar and Stalin had seven kills. Uh, so the Golden Boot Award is still very much up in the air. Uh, and then for fantasy, I will take another point for Wina Kopek. And I will probably get five more when he wins. Alex, you best not get second place. <laughs> anyway, so uh, let's keep going then, shall we? Okay. Uh, there we go. All right. So I promised you guys we're going to do a look at the overall game state. I'm just going to advance a turn so we can get Point of Cop back out of war mode and see. All right. Let's see what the overall situation of the game is right now. So, Wynakop X ahead by a lot. <laughs> that's the main thing that's going on. Looks like Sitting Bull desperately needs military tradition because he's building knights instead of calves. Uh, there's a large attack going on down here, 46 units. Um, but there's a lot of rifles in this city. I mean, I, I think it still gets captured, but it's a lot of rifles in there. So, in terms of our graphs, GMP is yes. <laughs> Oh, and I didn't mark Mao as dead on the fantasy spreadsheet. Yes, thank you for that. So Antisocial is down to just Mansa in the picking contest. He was on Antisocial's team. Thank you for the reminder. So as I said, GMP is just yes. Um, production, someone has factories. No one else has factories yet. Food, food is not as dominant, but that's probably because the factories are killing the health in Winnicopex cities. He needs to get medicine and biology. Then his uh, food count will balloon. Power, yeah. Uh, culture, also very, very dominant. Well, this is the first time Wanakopic has not been at war since I think about turn 85. 
So it's kind of amazing that his economy is this good, despite the fact that he's been at war like literally the entire game. And in terms of beaker count, Churchill 570, Sitting Bull 261, Alex 270, Wynakopek 1500. I mean, Churchill's in second and Wynakopek has triple his beakers. Almost, almost triple his beakers. All right, let's see if this attack on Mound City works. I suspect it will. It might not come in this turn. Um, but, you know, protective rifles are not the easiest units to dislodge. So, you know, the attack probably comes in this turn. 46 units is an awful lot, but rifles will kill a lot of these units. Um, might hold out. City might hold. Let's see. When there's that many units, though, I suspect the attacker takes it. And it, as indeed was the case. But it cost him pretty much his whole stack to do it. And now there's a stack of rifles that can probably recapture this. Anyway, we might as well check to see Churchill. He thinking about war? Yep, yes he is. And there's only one person he can attack, which is Sitting Bull. How about Wynakopek? He is not plotting war. So Churchill's going to come barreling in here any any second now. And he recently picked up uh, rifling tech for his, um, whatchamacallit, his uh, red coats. So it's probably a race to see who gets the killing blow here between Alex and Churchill. Let's see if Sitting Bull can re... Uh, Counterattack. No, I was going to say reattack. That's not a word. Counterattack here. Did uh, still quite a few units in this city, but um, yeah, sitting will cleaned up a lot of them. Let's see what the uh, Alex didn't lose as many units as I thought. I thought it cost him more of his stack to take that city, but apparently not. So Alex still not at rifling, and in fact not close at all to rifling. <laughs> he st still doesn't have paper, or printing press, or replaceable parts, or rifling. I mean, Alex, who's way behind, like you look at his tech tree, and he still doesn't have paper or education, and then you look at Wynakopek, who has the entire Renaissance, almost the entire um, Industrial Age, and is about to enter the modern era. It's pretty nutty, because Churchill's number two in tech, and he is heading for a very slow constitution and democracy. <laughs> Uh, did win a, yes, Hanukopek had one offensive war against Sitting Bull. Other than that, he, I think he had one offensive war and about six defensive wars, something like that. He was attacked so many times in this game. So many times. Anyway, there's not much left of Sitting Bull. So while Wynakopek just does his infrastructure building stuff up there, we might as well keep the camera focused down here. I think Sitting Bull is going to push back this attack from Alex and then get just crushed by Churchill. Because Churchill cannot literally can't declare war on anyone else. Now, what I wouldn't mind seeing is Wynakopek declaring a late game war on Alex and just stamping him out in exchange for declaring war on him so many times. Um, but who knows? Because Wynakopek could declare on anyone. Uh, he's most likely to declare on City Bowl, but of course he can plot where it pleased. What I don't want is him hitting Churchill and Alex slipping into second place. Again, that's me being selfish for fantasy contest reasons, but... Um, anyway, so here comes a new, here comes the new Alex stack. It's just tough for him to attack against, uh, rifles, although now he has grenadiers, so that gives him a unit that can trade decently with rifles. He lost Mound City, though, so that whole big stack of 46 units has entirely died, and I should have refreshed the map because we didn't see that. Um, yeah, we didn't see that pop up. Okay. New round, another Alex stack coming in. How much longer until Churchill joins this war? So, yeah, this stack will get bombarded. Um, Sitting Bull should not wait to get attacked by this. He should attack out because um, Grenadiers get the attack bonus only when they're... They get the bonus against rifles only when attacking, not when defending. So the matchup is actually better for Sitting Bull if he attacks out at the Grenadiers. He won't do that because the AI is not programmed that way, but it would be better if he did. So Wynakopek is about to unlock tanks. Um, as everyone else unlocks rifles, he unlocks tanks, which are two generations ahead in military tech. By the way, I don't suppose he's plotting war at all. Ooh. Oh, I like this. 
I like this. Let's get some more points for that fantasy contest, Wina. Let's get some more points for that fantasy contest. Who's it going to be? It's probably Sitting Bull. Probably. Let's run some tanks all over Stake Town. <laughs> anyway. So, uh, looks like there was some fighting there. We have to now grab uh, one of the AI's bar graphs. So we can see, yeah, he's been building up in terms of power. Sitting Bull is not long for this world because Churchill's going to attack him and I'm pretty sure Wine and is going to go after him too. How did one AI get two generations in tech ahead of the others? Well, there's this AI called uh, Wine and if And if you're new to AI Survivor, he's pretty good at this. Uh, he has a reputation of being a rather good AI at, a, at the economic side of the game. Him and uh, Mansa Musa tend to, they tend to get a little bit farther ahead of the other AIs. So even though he had to fight like a 3v1 multiple times, he's still winning the game because he's most of the other leaders in this game are kind of a clown car in terms of ability. Uh, Mal's, a good, Mal's a pretty good AI leader, but like Churchill, Alex, Sitting Bull, Augustus, not exactly the cream of the crop for AI survivor purposes. <laughs> yeah, Pakal also didn't spend the whole game getting dogpiled. That's true. Although Pakal fought off, fought off a 2v1 last week. All right, so that's what we expected, Churchill coming in. So Churchill for war number 13, my 11. You know, I really didn't think we'd have this many wars in this game. We've had a lot of wars. So Churchill with his much larger stack that also has rifles should be in a good position to sweep through uh, what's left of Sitting Bull, who only has six cities left. Uh, like, Sitting Bull held here at Chaco, but I'm pretty sure Poverty Point is going to get rolled over. Oh, and here comes Wina Kopak. Pretty sure they didn't sign Open Borders. <laughs> it's like, it's payback time! Although, to be fair, Wina um, Kopak did start the war first. It was Wina Kopak attacked Sitting Bull, and then Sitting Bull attacked him, and now he's back to finish the job. Oh, hey, 48 units. And this stack has infantry in it, so yeah. We will just see, have to see who gets what prize in this war. And look at these, got fighters airstriking the defenders. <laughs> Here comes the first tanks. <laughs> uh, tank against rifle, not a great matchup for the rifle. So, poor Sitting Bull. <laughs> Why did Kopex like, yeah, 3v1, how do you like it? How do you like that 3v1, huh? Anyway. Uh, Alex picked up Chaco, so that's one city for him. Probably going to be surrounded by the culture of other civs, though. Uh, and then we'll just see how quickly everyone else can race down here. <laughs> HC has artillery, tanks. He's researching mass media. Is there any chance of a Diplo victory? No. Uh, no one would vote for him. Even Churchill, who likes him a lot. I don't... Wait, no. Where's Churchill? Um... You know, he's pleased towards Churchill. Uh, plus nine, maybe. Usually you have to get to friendly, but plus nine might be enough to get the vote. So I guess there is a slight dip. No, wait, he'll be up against Churchill. Never mind. He'll be up against Churchill. So Churchill will have the second most pop. So Alex would have to be the one to vote for him. Uh, and Alex is only plus three. So no, not going to be a Diplo ending, which is not too surprising. Diplomacy is unlikely yeah when a cop can plot it pleased so you know he could if he wants to he can keep attacking at the after this we'll just it's just up to how aggressive he wants to be all right so he rolls right through cahokia taking the native american capital hanging gardens hey that's plus one health in every city and uh i don't expect i don't expect this is going to last oh he turned on the culture slider you guys Unless he's revolting on this. Oh, never mind. Oh, I thought he was revolting and then running the slider. Maybe he is. He did swap. He was swapping civics, though. No, he is. He is going. Oh, he does want the culture victory. Okay. He wants the culture finish, you guys. So uh, Machu Picchu is the one we have to watch. Um, yeah, he's on pace for a pretty fast culture victory. <laughs> he is at 1,126 beaker uh, culture per turn here. Jeez. And he's still fin he, and like he's about to finish Eiffel Tower for broadcast towers. So this is going to be fast. Like I know it's saying, um, what does Machu Picchu say? It says 38 turns, but it'll be shorter than that. Probably more like 30 turns. 
I actually might be pretty close on the finishing date here. Well, this game does not have much longer to last. I don't know why Plastics is the tech they so often decide to swap to Culture. I have no idea. Um, they just, they often run the slider on, on Plastics for whatever reason. Okay, enough with the request spam. All right, so Alex and Churchill are going for Poverty Points. Wynakopek is on the Eastern side. So it's largely going to come down to dumb luck as far as who gets the killing blow. Uh, it's kind of like a dice roll, but it's like a weighted dice roll because the Incan units are so much stronger than the other units. They're more likely to get the killing blow. Okay, so now that Eiffel's done, let's see what that did to Machu Picchu's time. Yeah, 30 turns. So we're on pace for like turn 307. I might be with it. I've got, what, 315? I think it probably slips below turn 305, but we'll see. I should have been even earlier. Should have gone for an even earlier finishing date. All right, so yeah, this is just Sitting Bull is so donezo at this point. It's just uh, a race for who can capture what. These cities down here don't even have defenses because the Incan destroyers have bombed out all the defenses. You know what's the worst occupation in the world? The sailors on this Native American caravel <laughs> with these destroyers surrounding it. Strength 3 against Strength 30. Maybe not the best matchup. <laughs> you have to be awful brave to be on board that ship. Anyway, so yeah, the tanks are just rolling forward. These stacks will attack immediately because there's no need to bombard defenses because there are no defenses. So we'll see who gets this. Churchill. And then the race is on for the last city. <laughs> what the? <laughs> the game is freezing on the paratrooper animation. Uh, who goes first between these leaders? So I think, let's see. So it goes Churchill, then Wyna Kopak, and then Alex. So Churchill should capture this city. And then I think Wyna Kopak will get the last one. Because he has point position to move on. Spiro down there. Uh, Wayne Akapek, where did you move all your units? Why did you move all your units backwards? No, you have to kill this city, not... You have to kill this city, not let Alex walk up and get the last hit. I want this fantasy point. No, do not let Alex capture this city. At least Wayne Akapek moves before Alex in turn order. Me and my playing favorites. No, Alex is going to take... Alex is going to get this city. No! What, what are you doing? No! Why did you move backwards? Alex is going to get two snipes after doing nothing in both wars. Oh my god. He moved backwards, you guys. He could have just walked in and taken it. He had a stack right here. And then he spent one turn moving here. And then one turn moving here. It's like, what are you doing? Just walk next to the city and capture it. Ah. But it's just that the fantasy contest is close, and these are points that, like, that's a swing of two points for the fantasy contest. Ah. Alex, you didn't deserve those kills. You got one city from Rome, and what, two cities from Sitting Bull? Ah. That's very frustrating. <sighs> Seriously, though, he is by far the weakest of the three. Uh, I swear, if that's like a D20 roll, it's like, I don't know, <laughs> 17. It's like maybe six of the outcomes are um, Churchill and like 11 are Wynne Kopak and like three are Alex and he landed it twice. Yeah, well, it's a swing of two points there. Um this was also a swing of two points, but between, uh, but not between me and uh, uh, Shinitiao for that one, because I, I didn't have uh, Churchill. Churchill is on, um, um, whose fantasy team has it? It was just in the chat. Churchill is on Kajotlik's team. All right. Well, that was a bitter ending to that. <laughs> uh, anyway, so let's do the elimination first. Uh, oh, I actually didn't update this previously. Mal, Alt, and Fifth, and then Sitting Bull, freaking Alex, I swear to God, in the right place at the right time. 
I cannot believe that Wayne Kopech did not get that last hit. He had his whole army one tile away. Anyway, so um, let's see. So Sitting Bull is eliminated on turn 283. Playoff three, turn 283. And that's an Alex kill. Alex is actually now leading in the Golden Boot. He has four points now. <laughs> Not particularly deserved, but the game is like that sometimes. All right, so Sitting Bull out. Another point for Alex. Six points for Alex now. But like um, it matters because now Kathy, if now like if Kathy scores in the uh has a good score in the um final, then like if if Shinity is at 28 and I'm at 33, and then I get five more, I'm at 38. I don't think he can catch me in the final game in the championship, but now I think he can. Although it'd have to be, although it will be be tough, but it's possible. Anyway, enough griping about stuff that only affects me <laughs> and no one else. Uh, I'm just saying that that two point swing actually was pretty significant because uh, um, I think I might have had the championship locked up for fantasy if that doesn't happen. All right. Well, in any case, the game is still going on, um, but not for much longer because Huayna Kopech's culture is insane and he's running the slider. The UN we know is not going to go anywhere. Uh, everybody's pleased with it. Everybody likes each other out of the leaders that are left. Churchill won't declare war. Alex and Huayna Kopech could, but are unlikely to. And he is going to go legendary in 20... Wow. Oh, my turn 315. No. I'm going to miss it by 11 turns. <laughs> Be within 11, but you get points for being within 10, not 11. Oh, well. So, uh, yeah, we only have 20 turns left, and I would not expect another word to break out. What are we on the war counter? 14? So, uh, interesting that Wina Kopech's population is not that... Wait, did Church Churchill actually won? What the? That's weird. Um, does Wayne Kopech not have enough population to block the... No, he has enough population to block the Diplo victory. He has 44%. That's enough to block it. He has enough pop to block. His population is a, a little bit lower than it should be, though. Like, given how much territory he has, it, I would expect him to have a higher population. Anyway. Um, so, we'll see. I'm expecting just to next turn these out. I was looking at that, but I think Wayne Kopech has enough population that he can't be caught for the Diplo victory. That even if they both vote again, even if Alex votes for Churchill, I'm pretty sure that um, it's not a Diplo victory. Alex, who still does not have rifling. Yeah, that's a little... There's really no reason for his capital to be size 14. Like, he's not even working some of these really good tiles. Jeez. Get some health. Get some extra health, dude. <laughs> Minus seven health there. Uh, did he ever research like the text that unlock extra food and health? Yeah, see, here's his problem. No biology, no medicine. Medicine would get in the um, hospitals for plus three health. Biology would get in the biology farms. That's why his population is lower than it should be because he didn't ever research those texts. Anyway, he is, he's on pace for the turn 304 victory. So it's not much time. Uh, I can't imagine anyone attacking him. I guess he could attack someone else. But when the AI is going for a culture victory, they usually don't declare war. Yeah, we couldn't betray our close friends as we're not plotting war. He can't declare war because he's at pleased. And he is not going to start a fight with the Incas. <laughs> well, his happy cap is enormous because he's running the slider. So you get all the extra happy faces for that. So this is probably just next turn for a dozen turns and we're out of this. Most likely. Assume, I mean, that would even be assuming that anyone would call a Diplo wrote anyway. No, Alex would not. There is a certain point at which the AI will not initiate a war if they're too far down in power. And like Alex is so far behind in power, he will not start a war. And you can see that he won't do that because he says, we're afraid of their military might. If they say that, they won't start a war no matter what. Even though the AI will initiate some very suicidal wars, there's a point at which they will not initiate a suicidal war. There is a point at which they won't do that. So, yeah, not, uh, poor Alex. All of the cities that are on the Incan border are like, 
a number of them are starving because they don't have any food. He, this city has never been able to work any tiles for food. It's just been a dead weight. It would have flipped back uh, long ago, except that captured cities can't flip back. So, no, aggressive AI removes the power check. Well, it doesn't remove it completely. It uh, it does change it so that they are um, more likely to. It like it it increases the threshold, but it's still there. It doesn't remove it completely. It just increases the amount. Like normally, they won't declare war if someone's like twice their power. Aggressive AI is like they won't declare war on someone who's like four times their power. Is my understanding. It is still there. It's just at a higher amount. Yes, Wynakopic is going for culture. Okay, people are saying otherwise in chat, so you guys could be right. All right, we're down to just 10 turns left. I mean, this is his slowest city, and it's 900 culture per turn. I mean, this culture is a thousand. This city is a thousand per turn. His capital is well over. It's 1300 per turn, although he is running the slider. Uh, yeah, so just 10 turns now. So unless he loses a turn in Anarchy, it's going to be turn 304. I wish it was turn 305, because I have turn 315. Yeah, everyone in the game who could attack when it caught back, try. Everyone except um, Churchill. Is the, Churchill is the only one who didn't attack him. And perhaps not surprisingly, Churchill is also the leader who is in second place, because he did not attack when it caught back. Although Alex didn't really suffer for it. Free religion. These uh, resolutions aren't even for the Diplo victory anyway. Um, he didn't really suffer for it, though. He got he managed to capture two cities, Bulgar and Vilcabamba. And he kind of got away with it. Although everyone else who attacked him did not get away with it. So Churchill looks like he's going to be in the championship. I suspect he will not be a popular pick to win because all the other leaders are seen as being definitely stronger. Uh, Churchill goes free religion. Alex is now only cautious with Churchill. <laughs> and apparently he's plotting war or something. <laughs> we have enough on our hands right now. All right, buddy. You really want one more war? Apparently he wants maybe another one. Not that it's going to matter. The game's going to be over in the next few turns. Because we only have, what, four turn, five turns left? Something like that? Just waiting on this city to go legendary. Yeah, it's, it's all the way down to turn 303. Alex gets an honorable mention. Gets an annoying mention. <laughs> no. So this city just revolted again. Again, it would have already flipped back, except it was captured in a war, so it can't flip back. So I don't know who Alex is plotting with. I think that the game's just going to end before he gets a chance to do anything, would be my guess. We're just about done here. That early uh, turning on the slider. I mean, this city's also revolt, <laughs> but also was captured. In, oh, no, this one was captured from Augustus. So this actually could flip, in theory. Not that it matters this late in the game. That one could actually flip to when it caught back. But, um, I mean... It's uh, it's over. This city goes legendary next turn. Turn 303. Hey, can't stop Wina Kopak. Just too strong, man. So Wina Kopak wins cultural victory as a meaningless free speech resolution goes through. Very, very dominant game for him. We've, uh, we've been seeing a lot of chalk results come through, but uh, the financial leaders have just really been throwing stuff around. So yeah, Wayne Akopic coming into the wildcard game had to take the tougher path, but excuse me, he uh, he's back in the championship, so we're going to have a fun championship game. All right, let's watch the replay. Mostly this game is Wayne Akopic gets insanely far ahead. Everyone attacks him. They can't beat him. And then he just wins easily. So many attacks against him. Um, so let's see, where, where were some of the places where he really pulled ahead? I think that this was a really key city to get just because it blocked off a lot of territory from Mal. Like these two really pen in Mal. And the Barb City spawning there. That was unlucky for Mal as well. The Barb City spawning there. Pretty unfortunate that. So we get some other... What other things? Oh, we had the early war between these guys. And that was significant because it just took... Um, 
It just took leaders that could potentially attack Wynet Kopak out of the picture. It really slowed these two down enormously. So while they were tied up forever, it was really the other four leaders that were kind of deciding what would happen in the game. Wynet Kopak declares one sitting bull, gets a fantastic war with sitting bull, takes two cities, getting the barbs. This was also really big. If Mao had captured this city, which I think was more likely, honestly, if Mao gets this city, maybe he is enough to like overturn. Um, maybe it's enough to like burst through the dam against Wynet Kopek when the big 3v1 comes because Mao is notably stronger if he gets this spot. It was a very strong city location. There was a happiness resource there. But um, yeah, and then we have all of the, <laughs> all of the many wars against Wynet Kopek. Where is his lowest point? It's coming up here. Alex declares war, takes a city. Sitting Bull declares war, takes a city. Like, he was in kind of bad shape here for a little bit, but this was really key. That was probably the biggest turning point of the game. Alex makes science peace with Wynet Kopak just to get out of one of those wars. And, and Alex, out of all the AI, spams units like, like crazy. So that was maybe one of the biggest things that take place. And then Augustus comes in, but Augustus was not in great shape. Um, and then Alex declares war, and that kind of relieved the pressure there. So some peace treaties, Mao gives back the city that he captured, and then Wynet Kopek is finally able to start concentrating on one opponent at a time. And then at least right up until Mao attacks again, which was suicide for Mao. Um, so first we see Churchill take advantage of, uh, here, Rome gets captured by the English Empire. Th that was what basically made Churchill the second place leader. He took Rome, and then he took almost all of the Augustus's territory. He missed one city. But that gave him enough territory that he pretty solidly locked down second place. And then afterwards, it's pretty much just Wynet Kopak running over people. He took forever to kill Mao, but he eventually did do it. As we get, we see the snipe from Alex to take the one city. Mao's dead. And then Sitting Bull is next because all of Sitting Bull's allies are gone. And then Alex gets the snipe again. Hooray. And at that point, the game's just over. A very deserving second place for Churchill. His early game was super troll, but um, when he signed peace with uh, Augustus, expanded through the south, and then came back for a, a decisive strike, that was uh, that was what really locked down second place for him. But no one could touch Wynet Kopak. He had a great opening. The whole the story of the game was other people trying to stop him and just being unable to. Even when they ganged up on him, they still couldn't stop him. He was able to get peace when he needed to. And, uh, you know, once that happened, it was over because he was so far ahead, so far ahead. I guess Sitting Bull didn't really have any allies. <laughs> he had his own religion. I guess he didn't really have any. So uh, next week, Wynet Kopak in the championship game with Mansa Musa and Kathy and Pakal and Cyrus and I guess Churchill. Uh, Churchill, not as exciting, but uh, the Mansa, Pakal, Wynet Kopak, Kathy, Cyrus is pretty spicy. So looking forward to that next week.